Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what, if Naruto marries a female Uchiha. Before I start, please support for more amazing content, and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by HunterX097 and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. In the village Kanahigakur, village hidden in the tree leaves, things were in utter and complete chaos. The reason for was that the Kyubi no Kitsune, nine-tailed demon fox, was attacking the village. Normally, the Kyubi would be sealed within a person with the Kyubi's powers sealed within the person. This person is known as a Jinchuriki, power of the human sacrifice. But a mysterious masked man with a Sharingan, copy will I, had taken advantage of the current Jinchuriki who had been in labor giving birth and had ripped the Kyubi from its Jinchuriki and set it upon the village. Normally the Kyubi would not dream of attacking the village and was on fairly good terms with the person he was sealed into. But the masked man placed him under a powerful Genjutsu using his Sharingan and set him on a rampage on the village. Currently, the fourth Hokage, Namike's Minato, and his dying wife, Uzumaki Kushina, the Jinchuriki were at the outskirts of the village, having managed to contain the beast and were preparing to seal it away. Minato made a string of hand seals and a complex sealing array appeared around him and Kushina. Kushina. Minato said. I'm going to use the Shiki Fuin, dead demon consuming seal, to seal away the Kyubi's Yang Chakra into Naruto while I seal the Yin Chakra into myself. Minato. Kushina pleaded with her husband, please think about this. You could seal it into me, I'm dying, and I could take the Kyubi, nine tails, along with me, but using the Shiki Fuin will cost you your soul. It's the only solution to our problem. Your dying and taking the Kyubi would upset the balance of Biju between the great nations, Minato replied grimly. I'll seal him into Naruto, to protect the village. And I can seal some of our chakra into him as well to help him when he's older and can access our chakra. Kushina thought carefully about her husband's reasoning and reluctantly agreed. All right. But if you are going to seal him away, then let me help. With my clan's techniques, his entire being can be sealed away into Naruto safely. All right. Minato looked at the strongest of all biju, tailed beasts, let's begin. As Minato went through a string of hand seals to summon the Shinigami, Death God, to seal the Kyubi, Kushina used her ability to create Kongo Fuza, adamant and sealing chains, to hold the Kyubi in place. Minato then placed Naruto on the sealing altar summoned in the center of the sealing array. Kushina made several hand seals and the sealing array for the merge with additional layers of Fuinjutsu, sealing technique. The sealing array is ready, Minato Kuin. Kushina said. Please hurry. Right. Minato made several seals. Kinjutsu, Shiki Fuin, Fuin. Forbidden technique, dead demon consuming seal, seal. The Kyubi restrained by the chain slowly became smaller and smaller, and got sucked into the seal that appeared on Naruto's stomach. Fifteen minutes later the Sandame Hokage and a retinue of A&B would come upon the scene only to see the dead bodies of the Hokage and his wife along with the baby crying on the sealing altar, the ink of the seal still fresh on his belly. Five years after Kyubi attack, a small child with blonde hair and whisker-marked cheeks, dressed in a tan shirt and green shorts ran away from a group of villagers as fast as his little legs could carry him, after getting kicked out of the orphanage. The raving mob chasing after Naruto threw bottles, stone or any throwable object at the running child. As Naruto ran, he still remembered his last beating four weeks ago, when he was out wandering the streets, frightened by the glares, and the constant whispers demon a freak emanating from any villager he passed by. Why do they always hurt me and what do they mean by demon? Naruto thought, he quickly turned to a distant alley and jumped into an empty dumpster. After he was sure he lost the mob the blonde pariah jumped out of the dumpster and sighed in relief. The adrenaline from the chase finally running dry and the exhaustion finally coming to him, Naruto slumped against the wall and quickly dozed off from sheer exhaustion. Naruto's Mindscape As Naruto began to wake up, he found himself free of wounds and in what he recognized as an enormous sewer, as he remembered hiding in a few from villagers and shinobi after, pranking them. It was dank and as he got up he noticed that he was in ankle-deep water, but strangely enough either him or his clothes got wet. Quickly taking stock he noticed that the walls and ceilings were running with blue and red pipes. Wanting to explore the sewer he decided to follow the direction the red pipes were going in. Someone should really think about sticking some lights in here. It'll do wonders for this place, Naruto murmured to himself, as he walked along the red pipe that seemed to go deeper into the sewer. He walked down the corridor which opened into an enormous chamber where all the red and blue pipes converged. It was a set of immense barred gates, easily several stories high, and even further. Right in the center was a paper tag with really complicated looking lines and squiggles all over it. 
All Naruto could read was the kanji on the center of the paper which was titled Seal. Curious, he walked closer and tried to peer into the darkness beyond the gates through the gaps in the bars of the gate. The gap led into another large chamber, completely dark so could not see farther than few feet inside of the gates. With the natural curiosity of a child made Naruto step inside of the gates through the bars, only to freeze in total terror when he heard a low rumbling sound, like an animal growling followed by a deep booming voice. So my flesh bag whelp of a jailer finally decides to visit his prisoner? Naruto blinked and looked up. The moment he did, he saw a pair of giant blood-red eyes suddenly peering at him through the darkness. Caught by surprise, the boy let out a startled scream and scrambled back till he was out the barred gate. He quickly ran back and was able to get a view of the pair of slitted irises and the entity that they were attached to. The moment he put space between himself and the iron gates, light suddenly poured into the chamber, and the prone form of a gargantuan orange fox emerged from the shadows. The fox rested its head on his front paws and Naruto saw nine tails in the darkness behind and saw how that the tails reached all the way to the ceiling. The giant fox grunted drearily at the sight of his container. Not too impressive considering you're still just a child, but certainly a change from my last two cells. Naruto felt the warm wind as the fox spoke and how the water rippled. With the now illuminated room, Naruto was able to see that chamber was an enormous cell and the fox was inside it. The fox itself about several times larger than any building in the village. By his estimate it was gigantic. But after the initial terror and surprise Naruto was not scared one bit. Now seeing the giant animal-like entity, the blonde child's chubby face curved into a smile and pointed up at him. Cat. He saw the massive animal's orange fur bristle and changed to one of outrage. I'm not a goddamn cat you braindead flesh bag. The water around the chamber rippled rapidly creating waves, and the red pipes glowed in angry red in response of the giant beast's anger. Blinking in surprise after its outburst, the blonde beamed. You've got whiskers. Cats have whiskers. If you are not a cat, then what are you? Naruto asked. By the sage. Are you honestly this stupid? Do you know who I am? The giant fox grounded through his teeth. Nope. Naruto shrugged. Wanting to bite his own tails off, the giant monster growled and fixed its best death glare onto the child staring cheerfully up at him. I'm the great. An all-powerful. Kyubi no Kitsune. Or what the people of your village like to call the nine-tailed demon fox. Call me whatever you like. Oh. Naruto simply replied in response, tilting his head up as he looked at the gigantic creature, who continued to glare down at him impatiently. So, this was the nine-tailed demon fox, the same demon that attacked his village all those years ago. H.M. Then suddenly the reality of the situation finally caught up to him. Wait. The nine-tailed demon that attacked the village all those years ago. Wait it. Seven years after the QB attack, early morning, it had been another peaceful night in Kanoha and another beautiful sunrise. A predetermined event that told everyone across the country that all was right with the universe. The rays of light from the shining golden ball that flew across the sky filtered down onto the landscape, illuminating every corner and filling in every shadow. Peeking over the rolling hillsides and forests the sun's magnificent gaze soon reached Kanahigakur, the hidden leaf village, which greeted its warmth with a welcoming breeze and the glow of sweet dew built up from the night before. The picturesque blend of nature with human settlement, along with the marvel known as the Hokage Monument sitting comfortably in the background made the glimmering scene of faultlessness a sight to behold. It as if an artist painted the entire village based on their own thoughts of what the most tranquil place in the world was like every waking hour. If it were not flying the flag of a shinobi village or was plagued with such a questionable history, it would have been paradise. To the people living inside of its walls though, it was just home. This was precisely what ran through a particular shopkeeper's mind as he prepared to open the doors of his business to the populace. Immediately upon pushing up the roller door of his general item store he stretched his back and greeted the sun with a sleepy yawn. He stepped out onto the street with a delightful smile on his face. That was until he turned around and looked up at the front of his shop that had been passed down to him from his father, and from his father's father before him. A shriek escaped his lips and he jumped further out into the middle of the road. W.H. What? What in the name of Kami? It was horrifying. His shop was covered in paintings of various symbols, words that should never be uttered in public and images that were either too abstract to make out or too shocking to even talk about. Not only that, but the poor salesman's building was not the only one that was hit by the maelstrom of paint works. From left to right up and down the neighborhood, every single roof, wall, door, window, and fence in sight was covered in the atrocious street art. It wasn't even the good, tasteful kind of street art either. It was terrible graffiti, single-colored, time-wasting bull one could find in any seedy alleyway. 
Almost everyone who was awake at this time and outside was looking up, horrified at their once glamorous suburb. What is this? How terrible. Disgraceful. It's everywhere, honey. Look. Even the clothes on the line got painted. Who did this? As questions and exclamations began filtering out from every villager and shopkeeper present, boisterous laughter suddenly filled the air and forced everyone in the vicinity to crane their heads towards a nearby overpass. There, standing on top of cluster of drain pipes straddling the gap, the culprit responsible for the crime stood over the crowd far below with his arms proudly folded, a bucket at his feet and a wide grin on his face. The blonde's grin flashed into view once all eyes landed on him. That's right. It was me. The boy with spiky blonde hair exclaimed. Uzumaki Naruto at your service. Remember that name well because I'm going to be the best shinobi someday. With that announcement made he wasted no time in making his getaway and took off down the street at speed, leaping across from rooftop to rooftop. Come back here. Damn it. It was him again. For a seven-year-old academy student, he was damn quick. The villagers could do nothing except attempt to give chase, point fingers and throw curses at him as he vacated the premises with feet quicker than a cat running from a garden hose. Within seconds he was out of sight, leaving behind a trail of destruction and fuming citizens. The owner of the general store growled and crossed his arms, now standing amongst the whole crowd of villagers who had also been attacked by the little menace. What a nuisance. He's made a big mess. The man next to him nodded in agreement. Even if we want to file a complaint, He's got no parents we can speak to. What do we do? Another concerned villager asked, a woman who turned out with the rest of the crowd holding up her summer kimono, now covered in colored paint reading the blasted perpetrator's name. Who's going to pay for all of this? By the time the unpleasantness started to waft off the targets for that day, Naruto was long gone and running down a random road many blocks away. He was still grinning mischievously from ear to ear and giggling nonstop, thoroughly satisfied at what he had been able to accomplish in a short half hour. If he were a dog then he would have claimed that entire area as his territory. Suckers, he exclaimed, laughing out loud as the paint bucket he had trailing behind him rattled on the wind. Naruto, 500. Villager idiots, zero. He stuck his tongue out in the general direction of his now faraway victims. Once he was certain that he had pulled far enough away from the danger zone, Naruto allowed his sprint to slow to a jog before dropping into a comfortable stride. He grinned in the satisfaction of seeing all the villagers' reactions to his latest felony and bathed in the afterglow. However, while he was walking down a quiet suburb way out of reach of anyone bound to be seeking revenge on him, he stopped when he heard a familiar call from nearby. I'm heading off mom. Eyes training left as his feet carted to a stop. Naruto saw the door to one of the nearby homes open and a boy around his age come running out, shortly followed by whom he guessed was his younger brother and their mother. The mother stopped the younger of the two from running off hastily by holding out two bento boxes, all neatly wrapped and ready for them. It was a homemade meal only a loving family member could prepare for her children. Hold on, sweetie. You forgot something, the mother exclaimed smiling cheerfully at her children. The older boy skidded clumsily and rushed back, looking slightly abashed. Oops. Sorry, mom. The youngster laughed, taking the box from her when it was lowered to him. What did y'all make for us today? Did you make us omelets? The younger brother asked eagerly while tackling his older brother in a playful manner. Is it omelets? He asked hopefully. They looked up to see their mother beaming at them. Of course I did. I made a lot for my boys. Yay! Both cheered excitedly, after which they then ran off with their bento boxes held overhead, like they were trophies won in contest and needed to be elevated. They celebrated their way down the street, looking back to see their mother waving at them. Be careful you too, she yelled out to them. We will, mom! The older brother called. Love you. Naruto's expression sunk as he watched the two siblings head on their way while their mother saw them off from her home's doorsteps. After a few seconds of looking and watching the happy parent walk back inside, he floundered over the memory of the warm bond he saw that they shared as a family. The blonde then turned his gaze back to the road ahead of him again and he shuffled on. With his head and his spirit set low, he began dragging his feet away to wherever the road took him. Where? Well that was a question he would really like answered. Obviously. No one was waiting for him back home. No one was waiting for him anywhere. Naruto then shook his head quickly. I can't let an unreal dream bother me so much. If I want to be the best shinobi, I need to be strong and cool. And I'm going to be both, the blonde recited quietly with a grin. He nodded assertively to himself when he parted from the suburb, heading off to wherever his body wanted to take him. I'm gonna get some training in. It was still early in the morning. He'd had his fun messing with the villagers and he had a full day's daylight left to burn. At least that's what Uzumaki Naruto thought. 
A shadow from in front of the crouching blonde fell over them and forced Naruto to look up. When he did look up, he saw his academy instructor, Iraka Yumino standing over him with his hands on his hips and a severe look on his face that pretty much said you're in big. Trouble the tapping of his foot only added to the tense feeling giving the blonde a moment to pause and comprehend his current situation. Silence prevailed between them, while the villagers scattered across the street stared with heavy anticipation hanging in the air. After a minute or so of the tense and heavy silence, with nothing being spoken between the two, Naruto sprouted his trademark grin and pointed up at the man. I found you, Iruka sensei The man's face bristled before he went into full rage mode, complete with his patented big head jutsu. Idiot. I found you. You've got it all backwards. Hehehe <laughs> so you still find me after all. He grinned. Yeah, I should have been in my class teaching right now, but instead, the Hokage sent an ANBU to me and wanted me to catch the troublemaker who's been running through these streets for a while now. Iruka said, folding his arms and watching the boy rise to his feet and dust down his shorts. Even with this statement the blonde wasn't worrying about his predicament in the slightest. Are you going to come quietly, or do I have to drag you away from here kicking and screaming? Well, other people would normally come quietly, but personally. I prefer leaving a scene kicking and screaming. It's way more fun than walking, Naruto replied without hesitation, earning a shake of the head from his normally agreeable teacher. But before anything else happens, I have a quick question for you, sensei. Fire away. If you're here, talking with me, Naruto pointed at his chest before gesturing towards the Hokage Tower where the academy was also located. Then who's looking after the rest of the idiots? Mizuki. I finally had a good reason to get that lazy assistant teacher to do some actual work around my class instead of just dropping in whenever he feels like it. Iruka replied sternly, wondering whether his friend would be able to hold down the fort in his stead. Of course, seeing as how they were both disciplined and mature Chunin the scar-faced instructor didn't think he had anything to worry about, and dismissed any further thoughts on the matter. He had a more pressing issue standing before him. As for you, you and I need to have a little chat regarding your absence from this morning's lecture. Oh no. Naruto replied despondent, slumping shoulders. Let me guess detention? Yep, and I will think more about the punishment for your pranks later. Iruka gave faux smile, before reaching out and grabbing the boy by the ear. The blonde yelped in pain when he found his full weight and body being dragged down the road by his earlobe. He was forced to stumble along at an incredibly fast pace to keep up with his smirking teacher. Right now, I'm taking you back to the academy. Ow. 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 Hey. Be careful, Iruka sensei You're going to rip my ear off. Ugh, Iruka sensei is so mean Naruto mumbled while massaging his aching and tortured ear. Yeah, he had come back to the academy with Iruka. The Ninja Academy of Kanoha. It was the place where young boys and girls entered to become ninja for the village. It was this place that saw the birth of some of the strongest shinobi to ever come out of Kanoha. The Densetsu no Sanin, Great Three Ninjas, Shiroi Kiba, the White Fang, and the most famous of all, the Yandame Hokage. Fourth Hokage, also known as the Kiroi Senko Yellow Flash. Currently, a very special group of students were having their first month of class. What makes this group so special? The answer was simple. This class of students were the next generation of heirs of many of the major clans of Kanoha. These young soon-to-be shinobi were the future leaders of the village, and it was the Ninja Academy of Kanoha where they would start their first step towards being proud shinobi and kunoichi of the leaf. Unfortunately, I'm just a normal child and an orphan he thought sadly but then became serious. But that doesn't mean that I will give up easily. I will surely become the best ninja of Kanoha he promised himself determinately. The young boy was taken out of his thoughts by the sound of a sigh to his right. The sigh made the young blonde turn to his right to see who that was. He guessed the person was probably as bored as him. And he was not surprised to see who it was. After all, she always seated herself in the same spot besides him. This girl had jet black hair that was pulled into a ponytail barely reaching the start of her back and two ebony locks framed her face. Cold black eyes and pale porcelain skin, the girl was wearing a simple blue shirt that had her clan symbol on the back of it, and she was also wearing some white shorts and a pair of blue sandals. The girl was none other than Uchiha Sasuki, daughter of the head of the Uchiha clan and younger sister of the infamous Uchiha prodigy Uchiha Izumi. She's one of the top students and her family probably already taught her the lesson. It's no wonder she's bored the blonde thought, and started yawning. So boring, I think I'll read the book which Gigi gave me. Maybe if he talked about Uchiha Madoka this would at least be a little interesting. But the only thing the instructor talked about has been Senja Hashirama and his almighty Mokutan, would release, thought the young Uchiha. She had gotten more than tired of the endless lectures about the Shodame. It was no surprise that she was more interested in Uchiha Madoka than Senja Hashirama. 
After all, the mighty Kunoichi and her Wanisan had been her idols as long as she could remember. Sure, she was considered a traitor to the village, a monster to the rest of the world as she destroyed a certain clan and slaughtered its people. But no one could deny that she still was considered the one of the powerful shinobi to walk the nations. And power like that was something every Uchiha wanted to achieve. The young Ravenette was taken out of her thoughts by the feeling of someone watching her. But when she turned, she saw the young blonde that always beside her, reading a scroll, completely ignoring the lesson of the Chunin instructor. Sasuke herself had never spoke to the blonde boy. The reason for that was actually quite simple. Making friends was not her strong part. In fact, from all the other kids in the class, she didn't talk to anyone. The reason she always sat here was that on the first day there had been no other spots except for the one next to Naruto. Since then, she had sat there even when there were other available spots. Because, unlike most students in the class, Naruto was quiet, something she appreciated. After all, she was here to prepare herself to be a kunoichi, not make friends. So, it was with a raised brow that the young Achiha looked at the young blonde, a little curious about what he was reading. After a few moments of staring, the ravenette went back to paying attention to the class even though it was a waste of time. Meanwhile, the young blonde had already forgotten about the lesson and was immersed in the scroll that I found in the library. It was scroll on the history of the Hokage, and he was quite interested in it. Thankfully, the librarian was part of a minority that didn't hate him so Naruto could read and even borrow books and scrolls from there without a card. Not many people truly knew about Naruto as he always acted like one-dimensional hyperactive idiot and a dead last in his class. Because after all, if he learned one thing from his experiences and from his idol, the Yandame Hokage, a shinobi must never reveal their skills unless it is absolute necessary and takes advantage of the surprise it causes and capitalizes on it. Suddenly Iraka sensei's voice brought Naruto out of his reading. He asked everyone to step out in the academy training ground for their weekly taijutsu spars. Naruto and the rest of the class were in the academy training ground. Everyone circled around the training ring for the taijutsu spars. Mizuki started calling out students by random. The girls went first and had their spars. Their spars were mostly pathetic except for two girls. The first one was Hyuga Hinata. She was called for the spar and beat her opponent into the ground. She could have ended the spar much sooner if the spars were not bound to only the basic academy fighting style. The gentle fist which Naruto had read about briefly was supposed to be a vicious style of taijutsu able to incapacitate opponents with the touch of finger. The other was unsurprisingly Uchiha Sasuke. He had to admit that she was the best of the girls. She defeated her opponent soundly and showed no mercy. He felt sorry for the poor girl who was her opponent. Sasuke was skilled in taijutsu and everyone could see that she could probably even defeat the boys. She was trained well and it was clear the Uchiha Sasuke was a prodigy just like her sister. Of course, that Uchiha brat still isn't your rival at least right now anyway. A voice echoed in Naruto's ears. Oh, hey Karama, oh heyo, good morning, Naruto greeted the biju. You never can be sure of anything before you see it for yourself, he replied to his earlier remark, watching the raven-haired girl. But I really want to spar with her if I have the chance. Yamanaka Ino vs. Haruno Sakura. Mizuki called and both girls stepped into the ring. They were the last of the girls' sparring match. Give it up billboard brow and it'll save you the embarrassment. Ino said smugly. In your dreams Ino Bunta, Ino Pig. Today I'll show Kibakuin who is the best to with him. Sakura screeched back infuriating Ino. Karama groaned inside Naruto. The spar between two great howler monkey fangirls. Great. Something told me this won't be a spar Naruto commented sweat dropping. Hajime. Iruka announced that start and both girls charged at each other. The spar, if it could be called that, was quite funny. There was no taijutsu style, just a lot of slapping, hair pulling and cursing about who would be with their precious Kibakuin. Said boy didn't pay attention to the fangirls and was busy flirting with Sasuke to go out with him. The Uchiha heiress just ignored him and watched the spar, she seemed not too interested in it though. In the end, the spar was broken off by Iruka. Seriously? And everyone calls them Kunoichi in the future? What's so special about that dog brat that most of girls are crazy for him? He is the heir of Inazuka clan, one of more famous clans in Kanoha. They'll have honor and prestige become his wife and the next matriarch of the clan. A boy with great status so it's no wonder that he has fangirls going after him Naruto's side. And he goes hounding after the Uchiha brat no matter how many times he is turned down by her. Karama remarked mockingly. Iruka then started calling the boys for their turns in the ring. There were some decent matches and some strange ones too like the one with between Shikamaru and Chuji. They were friends as Chuji was from a Kimichi clan and Shikamaru was a Nara. 
Shuji didn't want to fight his best friend and Shikamura gave up, groaning that it was too troublesome to fight and he would rather watch the clouds. Iruka fumed and called the match in Shuji's favor while the rest of the class were amused at the lazy Nara's antics. Shino was then called and defeated his opponent easily, Uzumaki Naruto vs. Inazuka Kiba. Mizuki called out and the girls started cheering, hooted yelling, Go Kibakuin, you're the best Kibakuin. And similar forms of encouragement, the Inazuka smiled with a smug face. He was happy his opponent was the dead last obe of the academy. There was no reason for him not to lose Naruto. Prepare to be beaten to a pulp, loser. Kiba smirked. We will see kibble breath. Naruto said with a cheerfully and this provoked the Inazuka. Hajime. The match proceeded in a way no one thought it would. A battle of wills and grit commenced, as one of the two boys doggedly chased his opponent all across the ring, with a flurry of ferocious dashes and attacks while the other pulled him along as though he were attached by a string. The most surprising aspect about this show though, was that Naruto wasn't the one doing the chasing. It was the other way around. Everybody watched on as the two academy students played cat and mouse with each other. One opponent was getting incredibly frustrated from not being able to land a single hit, whereas the other one was grinning from ear to ear while moving and dodging out of the way of every swing. The way Naruto was dodging his opponent notably, was going against every single taijutsu rule, maneuver and technique in the book. Not bad kit. The QB grinned while observing the interesting spar of his container, whilst others would simply weave, leap away, keep their distance or move around their enemies to outpace them. Not that he wasn't doing it. Naruto was sticking at extremely close range to his target despite the onslaught of attacks and dodging from inside his opponent's innermost range. Damn it. When did the dobe become so much faster than before? Kiba gritted his teeth while giving chase, swinging at his target with straights and hooks. Naruto in response moved back, swaying, and throwing his upper body this way and that, avoiding the sharp blows while staying directly in front of the team almost taunting him with his smile. You can dodge well, but how the hell are you going to throw attacks at me from those angles? A sharp roundhouse kick came to nail Naruto across the face, but he swayed back to dodge it at the last second before springing back up, his face appearing just inches in front of Naruto's. The piercing blue eyes of the blonde met the Inazuka, the latter's gaze widening in shock when he was confronted by the blank stare of his opponent. W what? Kiba blinked a split second before realizing Naruto was just standing directly in front of him and staring at him. He cocked his left over his shoulder. Damn it, a jab shot out, but the blonde suddenly zipped out of his line of sight and the Inazuka ended up hitting nothing but air. Emitting a frustrated growl, the fang boy looked left and right before swiveling about 180 degrees, where he saw his opponent circling him with his hands and guard hanging at his sides. How the what? Kiba was baffled. How is he moving like that? Ino spoke up from where she stood. What is he like a cat or something? No human being should be able to bend that way and at such speed and manage to escape so quickly. Immediately, the rest of the cheerleading squad once again began voicing their undying support for the genius of the academy. They cupped their hands to their mouths and cried out his name. Kibakuin! You can do it! Sakura shouted. Beat the class clown, Kibakuin! You're awesome! Don't let that idiot mess with you! He's pathetic! You can knock that slacker's butt to the ground easy! Come on, Kiba Kun. Kiba gritted his and tried to tune out the shouting from the fan club. It wasn't exactly helping him focus. The dog boy rushed into Naruto and missed again and again. Kiba dashed straight at Naruto again, the crowd swooning when the genius dove in with a beautifully corked up left straight. He was clearly intent on bringing this battle to close range, to trap his opponent on the edge, to cut off his escape and to bring him to heel with a quick takedown. However, just as he was getting within striking distance, Naruto hovering outside of range of his punch, suddenly dove in to meet him halfway. In the blink of an eye Naruto's face was stopped just inches from his target. The speed he used shocked the Inazuka. A split second later the blonde in front of him spun around and allowed him to dive right past him, resulting in the dog boy's fist striking nothing but air again. Stop messing around, Kiba said loudly. All right. Naruto grinned teasingly. As you wish, he dug his feet into the ground and widened his stance. He stood just outside of Kiba's reach, signaling everyone he was now ready to duke it out. No more running. At this time, everyone totally focused on the match. Even Sasuke started looking over the spar and couldn't take her eyes off it. Let's see what you've really got loser Kiba thought, clenching his left for a straight. The distance between them was quickly cut away and the Inazuka was ready to begin. However, just as Kiba's left was being drawn back for a punch, a sudden flash of light froze him followed shortly by a sharp pain and the distinct echo of a sharp thump, like a deft bag was just hit by a jackhammer. From the crowd's point of view, 
it was instantaneous. Naruto was the one to make the first move against his opponent, but instead of pulling off some predictable wild swing or busting out one of his stupid moves from before, what he did stunned every single person on the field. All the crowd saw from where they were standing was the blurred motion of his fist. The boys left being drawn back from a clear hit and a cloud of sweat exploding off Kiba's face. The latter's head recoiling from the unexpected impact of a blazingly fast punch nobody was able to see. The dog boy stumbled back a few, head still cocked upwards and a shocked look slapped clean across his face. Naruto looked straight into his opponent's astonished eyes, awaiting a response but then he froze once he saw Kiba's situation. Damn. Naruto cursed in his head and straightened up out of his stance quickly. Well I suppose it's so much for the Inazuka brat. He's still a little kid after all. Karama said but couldn't help feeling satisfied with the result. But it will put him in his place he thought with a smirk. I'm sorry Iraka sensei Mizuki-sensei. I think I got too rough with him. He smiled nervously. Iraka raised his eyebrow and stepped forward. What? You only threw one punch, and you didn't even give the sign of reconciliation. Well Naruto became even more confused. Feeling something strange, the Chunin detached himself from his notes, and pushed his way into the ring. Shortly arriving at the scene of the disturbance with the boys, Iraka looked down at the Inazuka. What is it now? He asked curiously but then he widened his eyes. Holy crap! Hearing the voice of their sensei, the rest of class ran to him, wondering what exactly was wrong with Kiba until they all backed away in shock. Achiha Sasuke was stunned. She couldn't believe what her eyes were seeing. Never she thought she would witness right here, on the spar of the annoying mutt and the dobe, which she always set a default for her wasting time. It was natural that Kiba would win and Naruto was knocked out like usual. At first, Sasuke just wanted the boring matches to finish and then she could go home to train with her sister. It would be better than watching useless students play together. But she was wrong today, as something truly unexpected had happened. She saw it when she came closer with her class. Inazuka Kiba, one of the top boys in the class was out cold. His face was frozen in a look of dazed disbelief and, not only did he have a trickle of blood running down from his nose, but his right eye was swollen shut. Irika, meanwhile, was waving a hand in front of the boy's face from left to right, attempting to coax some sort of responses out of him. He then clicked his fingers several times and upon receiving zero life signs in that manner, Sasuke widened her eyes. He knocked the mud out on his feet by one punch. Her head snapped towards Naruto, who was looking away and scratched his head sheepishly. When and how the hell can the dobe do that? Well I just remember that I have something to do so see you later guys. With that, Naruto was gone. Iruka blinked in surprise, then snapped out of his reverie and grabbed his chin. So, Naruto wasn't dancing around his opponent to draw attention to himself. He was trying to wind him up and tire him out. After getting Kiba to chase him around and burn up his endurance, he then hit him when he was weakened and too exhausted to react in time to counter. He was biding time, fighting smart and moving evasively, waiting for the right moment to strike. He deduced. Everyone gaped, including the Uchiha heiress. A simple but effective tactic. Making the opponent burn their energy, then fighting back once they were tired. No one could resist when your strength weakens so much, and a few effective counters would end the match immediately. But Naruto just needed one punch. At that time, Kiba suddenly awoke from his dazed state of oblivion with a shout of terror. Students and teachers alike jumped back in shock when he stumbled out of his reverie, waving his hands in front of him like he was trying to ward off flies or punches before stopping altogether. Panting and looking around at the bewildered faces surrounding him in paranoia, Kiba gulped deeply and asked the question that pretty much had everybody scratching their heads. W what just happened, he stuttered. Shikamaru just stared at him. That's kind of what we'd like to know Kiba. The rest of class crowded around him and started to talk about what was wrong with Kiba. For Sasuke, she didn't care for the crowd or about what they were debating. Instead, she just looked at the direction the blonde boy had just went some minutes ago. Lots of questions were in her head about Naruto's skills. Just some motions and a punch, Naruto won his opponent. Iruka didn't call the match in his favor yet Sasuke couldn't help but think Naruto had won. When did the dobe become so strong? What's with that speed? I didn't even see him land his punch. It looked as if he didn't punch Kiba at all she thought, frowning. Maybe I'll try sparring with him once I have a chance. One month later, Achiha Sasuke was one frustrated girl. Why you may ask? Because her Wanichan had promised her that she would help her with her training with Kanai, Shuriken and fire style techniques. But she had gotten a mission at the last moment making her unable to help her, something that pissed her off to no end. Don't misunderstand, Sasuke knew that her sister had a lot of responsibilities as a member of ANBU, 
but still this has been the third time she had cancelled their training so it was normal for her to feel frustrated as this. It was because of that reason that you could find the young Uchiha walking toward a training ground in which she could practice alone on a Sunday, a scowl present on her face. Of course she could have gone to any of the training ground that her clan had, but today she really just wanted to burn something a little bit, and she decided that it was better to do it alone where no one would watch her unleashing her fury. So it was with that mentality that she went to a training ground which she knew was empty almost all the time since no one used it. So it was really surprising to the young black-haired girl when she actually found someone in this place, doing what it looked like taijutsu training. It only took a moment for Sasuke to figure out who was the one in the training ground. After all that hair color and spiky style could only belong to one person in her opinion. Since when has the dog trained in this place? Though Sasuke, whose curiosity towards Naruto's training was going as high as it can be. Her first thought was of just leaving and finding another training ground, but then an idea came to her mind. This was the perfect opportunity to not only get some info on the blonde as lots of things about him bothered her since his match in the academy. In addition, it could also be a good practice at staying silent and gather information, something that her sister had told her it was important for an ANBU. So with that in mind the young Machiha got herself into a tree that was inside the training ground but far enough that in her opinion the blonde would not notice her, and with her. Eyes focused on said boy she just watched. She watched as the blonde did some moves of a fighting style she had never seen in her life just before start practicing throwing kunai and shuriken at the bark of a tree. And the young Achiha found herself actually a little impressed by the skills the blonde had with those weapons. Of course he was not at the level of her wanichan in her opinion, but he was definitely better than the majority of the other student at the academy. That thought brought a frown to Sasuke's face. After all she could remember his ability with Kanai and Shuriken were not really great in the academy's tests. So how is it that now he was so good at it when in the last Shuriken lesson, which was a week ago, he just managed to nail half of the Shuriken at the training dummy. Sasuke found her curiosity towards the blonde boy increasing with every minute. She really thinks we don't know that she was watching? Karama told Naruto who was still focusing on his training. Don't be so mean. It's still quite good. No wonder that she is one of the best in my class Naruto whispered still pretending not to notice her presence. It was after a few minutes of practicing with the normal ninja tools that Naruto went to the middle of the training ground and started meditating, something that confused Sasuke a lot, after all she knew about the art of meditation, but she didn't know that someone of her age already knew how to do it. All right, you can come out now, Sasuke-san. Those words with a mischievous voice made the young Achiha turn around just to see that the boy was still in the middle of the training ground. Although his eyes were open and they were looking right at the spot in which she was hiding mischievously, making Sasuke's eyes open wide in surprise. After all she tough she had hidden herself perfectly. So how did the dog find her? The young Achiha girl had to option at that point. She could both run away and act like this never happened or she could confront him and see if she could get any information. It took less of a second for her to decide. Naruto had his gaze completely focused on the young girl since the moment she stepped down from the tree until she got just in front of him. Her arms were crossed over her chest, and a scowl was still present on her face. Naruto felt nervous. What did he do something bad? So hat do you need Sasuke-san? He asked as his eyes looking directly at Sasuke's with an innocent gaze, something that annoyed Sasuke a little bit. What were you doing? She totally ignored Naruto's question completely, something that just made Naruto brow to rise a little bit in interest before answering. Well I'm training. He answered. And since when were you so good at throwing things? Sasuke asked a little forcefully, wanted to get to the bottom of this fast. Oh, if you want to train, I will leave now and find the other place. Naruto said cheerfully, totally ignoring her question. This annoyed Sasuke, she wanted to know exactly how strong was this guy since apparently the skills he showed in the academy were fake. After all no one gets that good in just a week, so she got to the conclusion that, for some reason this guy was hiding his real skills. But why though? Sasuke was going to find out though and after a few seconds she thought of a way to see if her theory was true. Fight me Sasuke said with a glare directed at Naruto. Yes? Naruto replied confusingly. You heard me, fight me. She said with more steel in her voice. Her plan was actually simple, to fight him and see exactly how strong he was just to see if he was really holding back at the academy. But there is no reason for us to fight. My Gigi said that is bad Naruto said innocently. In fact, he was trying to get himself out of this situation. He really didn't want to fight her now. By the way, I don't want to get in trouble as she is the daughter of the Uchiha clan head he thought. I just say once more and only one. Fight. Mishi growled, intensifying her death glare. Naruto swallowed nervously. So scary he thought. Just fight her kit. 
the nine tails said with an evil smirk. If she want, show her your skills and teach her who is boss. Even you fur ball Naruto really wanted to smack his hand on his forehead. He then turned to Suzuki. I suppose I don't have a choice, right? He asked and Suzuki nodded firmly. The blonde just could sigh. All right. The goblin boy answered, getting a surprised expression from the Uchiha, before it turned into a little smirk with obvious confidence in her eyes. After all, even if she thought that Naruto was stronger than what he showed in the academy, there was still no way he was stronger than her. And after she beaten him, she could ask all the questions she wanted. No jutsu or weapons, just haijutsu, understood? Naruto confirmed, getting a nod of acceptance from Suzuki, who was now standing a little far away from Naruto, and had already entered in her clan fighting style which if Naruto remembered right is was called the Interceptor Fist, that was focused around predicting and countering your opponent's movements thanks to the Uchiha's bloodline, the Sharingan. But if Naruto was right, Suzuki had not awakened her Sharingan yet, which meant her fighting style would be incomplete. The blonde analyzed the situation carefully. Compared to Kiba, Suzuki was really far better than, she was a girl though. In that case, Hajime. Naruto said just before entering in his own taijutsu style, one that was centered in speed and precision. This style was one of the many that he learned from scrolls which he borrowed, and it was used for dodging and evading attacks and hitting your enemy just at the right time, which combined with Naruto's natural speed. Naruto also decided to mess with Sasuke a little bit tough, as a form of payback for spying on him, even though he knew she was here from the beginning. So he just stayed there, knowing that Sasuke would not attack first since that was not the Uchiha's fighting style. After a few minutes of nothing but staring, plus Naruto's sly grin on his whiskered face, which got Sasuke pretty mad, the Uchiha girl decided to just attack herself and the stupid dobe who was not going to move, so she ran at him with what Naruto guessed was probably genin like speed. Wow, she is surely stronger than Kibano, not only him but most of all students in academy Naruto thought admittedly. Sasuke was still moving slow so when she finally reached him and aimed a right fist at his face Naruto easily evaded it by sidestepping to the left but she retaliated with a roundhouse kick aimed once again to his head, which he dodged by moving backwards faster than the kick. This got a growl from Sasuke who tried her luck again with another punch. Only this time after dodging Naruto grabbed Sasuke's wrist with enough strength that the Uchiha girl could not get free, so she went for another fist. But he grabbed her other wrist too, and before she could even do anything she just pushed away from him, and then he widened the distance between them a little by jumping. Backwards. This continued for a little more than 10 minutes in which Sasuke would try to hit Naruto, and the young blonde would just either dodge or block without attacking, not even once even though he had more than one opportunity for it, which was making Sasuke more angrier at every second. After 15 minutes of sparing, Naruto decided to put an end to it so when the next punch from Sasuke came he once again grabbed her wrist and twisted her arm and her back to fast. For her to see, then he used his legs and pushed Sasuke making her fall face first into the ground. Do you yield him? Naruto asked mischievously twisting Sasuke's arm a little more to prove her that this little fight was more than over. Sasuke murmured something under her breath which Naruto didn't hear really well. Was was that? He asked. I said that a yield, now get off me you baka. Sasuke yelled, more than angry for being bested so easily by someone of her age. Said someone accepted that and released Sasuke from his grip before standing and offering the young girl a hand to help her, which she just slapped away before actually storming out of the training ground with a heavy scowl on her face and and if Naruto heard her write her last words before leaving sounded like, this is not over. Naruto had a confused expression in his face all time though, his confusion getting to his mouth in a single comment. Was it something I said? Sasuke walked into her home and furiously opened the door. She still couldn't pass her loss away from her head. Since attending the Shinobi Academy, this was the first loss when she sparred with someone her own age. Oh, you're back, little moon. Looking up, Sasuke was surprised to see her sister, Uchiha Izumi. Wanichan, what are you doing in home? I think you got your mission, she asked, removing her shoes and placing them by the door. Something happened so another team took our team's mission, and Mutochan. Izumi answered, watching her every move. Look like you're still mad because I didn't help you with your training. Sasuke shook her head. No, Wanichan, I know how important your missions. I'm not mad at you, she said quietly. I'm pissed off a little at first though, I see. So why do you look like someone bite you when you enter the room? Izumi asked, still observing her little sister. Hearing that, Sasuke narrowed her eyes and ground her teeth. She wanted to forget it but her sister just unintentionally reminded her of the reason for her bad mood. But she couldn't lash out her because Izumi didn't know about it after all and Sasuke didn't want her to know too. 
It was a shame for Sasuke because she lost the spar with the dead last in the academy. What would her sister think, and her father would disappointed in her as he was the clan head of Uchiha clan, nothing, Wani-chan. Sasuke replied harshly. Izumi frowned as she saw Sasuke's expression. She knew her little sister, she was ignorant and a little cold in the academy. She even didn't have any friends in there and Izumi was really worried about her sister keeping herself very private. Sasuke would graduate after she completed her academy time and started her shinobi's life. She would be put in a team with other two and their jonin. They needed to learn to work together and trust each other. However, Sasuke in home was a sweet girl, always listened to Izumi and her parent. Especially, Sasuke was very close to Izumi as she always shared to her what happened in the shinobi academy. Emudo-chan, I can say that you're irritated something and I can't help if you don't talk to me. Izumi said softly, she really wanted to know what or who made Sasuke behave no like herself every day. I want to know too, Sasuke-chan. Her mother said, stepping down the hall. You aren't usually in bad mood like that unless Izumi-chan is busy and can't help you. Sasuke groaned because she knew that they wouldn't end this conversation easily. But the youngest Uchiha thought it wasn't really a problem if she told them. Her mother, Uchiha Mikoto, was gentle and understanding while Izumi still helped Sasuke with her training when she didn't get missions. If she needed someone to talk about her problems, she would surely find her mother and sister first. Not really a problem, Sasuke said. It's just that I lost the spa with a classmate and I feel frustrated. Izumi raised her eyebrow then she smiled slightly. I know you're a little stronger than most of all students in the academy, and this is your first defeat. Little Moon, no wonder you will feel a little uneasy, but it's normal if you lose a spar. By the way, your defeat will point out your weaknesses and shortcomings. From there you can continue training and improve yourself. She explained. Sasuke sighed then she replied with her innocent smile. Yes, Wani-chan. Izumi felt satisfied as she saw her Amuto get her cheerfulness. She rubbed her head. However, Mikoto placed her hands on her hips and huffed. But who can manage to beat my baby in a spar? She demanded. The Uchiha girl pouted, he's supposed to be the dead last in my class, he's usually late and even skips classes. She was going to tell that he didn't pay attention for class but she herself did the same thing sometimes. Sasuke also didn't want her mother to know because she knew Mikoto wouldn't appreciate it. How could a dead last defeat you as you're one of the top student? Mikoto asked with a slight frown. I don't know Okasan. I fought my best and used all Taijutsu skills when Ichan taught me but you still couldn't get that Uzumaki even one blow. Sasuke huffed and crossed her arms. Mikoto suddenly opened her eyes. Wait a minute. You just said his name is what? It's Uzumaki who defeated me. His full name is Uzumaki Naruto. Sasuke answered furiously. She still couldn't easily swallow her loss. The two looked at her in shock, the Jinchuriki of the nine-tailed beast. Izumi mumbled, trying not to let Sasuke hear it. For Mikoto, she was trying to get her emotions under control. That name, especially his surname, her mind thought about a certain red-haired woman and blonde hair man. It is impossible. Haruzan said that the child died with them. No way he would lie clan heads about something big like that. Mikoto thought, feeling worry grip her. She tried to make myself believe it was just a coincidence. That boy just might happen to have the same surname with her best friend. But what if that's not true? What if he's really? Mikoto gripped her skirt. She just snapped out of her thoughts as Izumi spoke. Kaachan. The girl was looking at her with a worried frown. What's wrong? I'm fine. Mikoto smiled at her oldest daughter. She then turned to Sasuke, Sasuke-chan. When you meet him next time, invite him to our home. Sasuke and Izumi stared at their mother. Why did she suddenly want to invite that boy to their home? Oh don't look at me like that. I just want to know who is the one making my baby girl pay attention to him. Mikoto said with a giggle. The little raven-haired girl flushed. I don't pay my attention to him Ka-chan. He's just a dobe and an annoying idiot who just causes everyone troubles. She hissed. Oh my, oh my. You're cute now, Sasuke-chan. Her mother was still snickering at her. Che. Sasuke glared and pushed past them to go to her room. How dare they tease her about that. No way she had anything to do with that dobe and if she even had, it would be a revenge for him humiliating her. Izumi shook her head with a sigh. She then looked at Mikoto. Ka-chan, are you sure? She asked. Do you really want to meet that boy? Why not? I'm sure like to meet him. She smiled. This is the first time Sasuke-chan sets her eyes on someone, especially that's a boy. I'm sure he's really interesting. Izumi didn't tell anything to protest as she totally agreed with the Uchiha mistress's reason. Even she herself was interested in Uzumaki Naruto. 
except his Jinchuriki status. Izumi didn't know about him so much, maybe a troublemaker after pranks he did and made it hard on villagers or even ANBU teams. He pranked her team a few times, and she still remembered how hard she found that boy, even lost track of him sometimes. She wondered many times how he could do that as he was just a little boy. She really wanted to meet and talk to him, but she didn't know how to start. Now he appeared again and managed to catch her little sister's attention, which most of all couldn't do except her family. She was more curious about him now. I suppose this is my chance to find out him more the prodigy of Uchiha clan, Uchiha Izumi, thought with a smirk. After sparring with Sasuke, Naruto had his dinner in Ichiraku Ramen and then made his way deep into the library. He thought about the Uchiha girl and her behave. At first, she watched him training and when she was found out, she irritated and demanded a spar. When he satisfied it, she looked like want to skin him alive. Man, girls were complicated. It's not really difficult to understand. You're just simply very dense. Karama said in his mindscape. Chfurball Naruto grumbled. Once the blonde reached the library, he saw someone. Ayumi, the librarian, was an okay person in Naruto's opinion. She would smile at him not the fake ones and allow him to borrow a few books or scrolls. She even had helped him read the difficult words when he could just read some simple words at first. While Naruto wasn't usually taught much in the academy because the vast majority of teachers didn't like him, Ayumi taught most of all. Even some simple shinobi skills because she was a retired kunoichi. Sometimes, Naruto heard the librarian mumbled. Just like Minato under her breath. He was puzzled. What did she mean? Besides, Minato was the name of Yandame Hokage, right? Good afternoon, Ayumi-san. Oh hello, Naruto-kun. Today you come to find more books? She smiled softly and Naruto nodded. Yeah, and some scrolls. Well, feel free to check and find what you need. The librarian said kindly. You can try going upstairs. Maybe you will find something new. Thank you, Ayumi-san. He beamed at her, then walking up the stairs. He reached the second floor, and Naruto was amazed at how different it was to the previous one. The room was filled with sections that looked like cubicles, with wooden signs attached to the top of each threshold with string. There were more signs than Naruto could count. However, some sections seemed to be much larger than others. In the center of the room was a maze of hip-high bookshelves and desks with many shinobi studying and reading at the heart of the library. The maze seemed to be circular in shape like a whirlpool, with a librarian's small counter in the shape of a triangle at opposite end to the entrance of the maze. It was upon further inspection that Naruto realized that it was the symbol of Konoha itself. Naruto looked at it for a while, feeling nothing strange so he approached to the largest cubicle. The library building itself was about 100 meters in length and 30 meters in width, with the towers being equally spaced out on the top. As such, the section that Naruto entered was roughly 25 meters by 10 meters. And yet despite its size, it was practically barren, Naruto noticed as he went inside. Inside the room was something similar to what Naruto had seen earlier. It was something more akin to a counter however, which towered above Naruto's head. Dotted around the counter were high stools, although they were not equally spaced out like the previous maze of desks. Upon closer inspection, on the inside of the circle and what Naruto assumed was empty space were more counters, but they were evidently not meant to be used for work. Each of these counters seemed to have about 10 centimeters between them, and the closer the counter was to the center, the closer it was to the floor, like a whirlpool sucking what felt to Naruto like the rest of the room. The first thing Naruto actually noticed was the dust. Judging by the thickness of the layer that resided on the counters and books, this room was barely used, with one or two books frequently taken out to be studied. Fuinjutsu, for all intents and purposes, was a lost art. After the destruction of Yuzushi Obikure, the art disappeared to the bookshelves. In fact, many books that were saved from the fallen village were moved into this very room, to be lost to time. With no proper masters left to showcase the amazing potential of the art, many ninjas moved to flashy ninjutsu and dangerous genjutsu. Brushing away the dust from the counter, after heaving his way onto one of the stools, Naruto noticed someone had engraved something into the wood. Squinting his eyes to read the worn handwriting, Naruto scoffed at the idea of someone disrespecting the ancient building. However, a small part of him found it amusing it had lasted this long, and that it slipped under the librarian's noses. Kushina was here you know. Naruto shook his head with a smile, wondering how bored that person must have been to write something into this old table. Why is this place so dusty anyway? Naruto wondered, almost sneezing due to the dusty air in the room. It's understandable as no one ever comes in here for a long time. Karama said. Are you sure you want to learn higher techniques, Kit? Don't you see it's still too early for you? Of course I want to learn them. Naruto said with a snicker, 
a fox-like smile making its way onto his face. I'm gonna come here every day. By the way, no one is here. It means I can have all the books to myself. I won't worry that someone find out and interfere me. He grumbled when he remembered teachers in his academy usually did everything to sabotage him, or more simple, they didn't teach him anything or teach falsehoods. Luckily, he had Karama and the librarian help him. Well, it'll take you a while, the fox pointed out, gesturing to the hundreds of books and scrolls around the room. I know, Naruto said, bouncing in his chair now, causing small amounts of dust to fly into the air. But it would be no fun otherwise, you stubborn kit. Karama sighed, but couldn't help feeling amusement and awe lil. You sound like your old man and that woman. Naruto made his way to shelves in the room. He climbed up a chair and reached toward a book. He pulled it toward him, and his eyes skimmed the plain cover page. He blinked. Uzumaki Mito wrote this. He opened the book gingerly. There was a warning. Fuinjutsu's ceiling is considered to be highly dangerous and risky. If done wrong or without proper supervision, it may lead to severe injuries and may even result in death. Please proceed with caution. A rational part of Naruto's brain told him to stop reading, but another part of him felt compelled and drawn to the book. His desire won out and he reluctantly flipped open another page. After all, I know ninjutsu, tijutsu and genjutsu but I haven't ever heard about fuinjutsu. A new type? He turned to the next page. Fuinjutsu is a type of jutsu that seals objects, living beings, chakra, along with a wide variety of other things within an object. It can be used to restrict movement among many things. Fuinjutsu is one of the most dangerous skills that can be acquired by a shinobi. Without the proper repercussions, it can lead to permanent injury, limb detachment, destruction of property, loss of the five senses and even death among many other things. Fuinjutsu is only limited to the seal master's creativity. Naruto took the book in his arms and brought it with him to the table. There, he allowed himself to sink into his study. He soaked up knowledge like a sponge. His eyes skimmed through the symbols, letters and numbers with ease. It was as if the knowledge was already implanted at the back of his head and all he needed to do was pluck them out and review. Unbeknownst to the boy, the librarian was secretly watching him from outside. She mentally giggled, looking at the boy who focused on the book. After all, she told him to go the upstairs on purpose, she wanted to lead him to this place. You must be so proud of your son, Yandame sama Kushina-sama the woman who worked at the library smiled. Jutsu jutsu what kind of jutsu? Naruto murmured to himself at his desk as he bit at the tip of the spoon he was holding. He gritted his teeth together in frustration when his mind drew up the same list of problems over and over again. Man how can picking a jutsu to learn be so hard? Did Aji-san and everybody else have the same problem? Or is it just me? Coming back from the library with some books and scrolls, Naruto had been doing everything in his power to come up with a sort of fail-safe project that he read in a book and decided to try it. Sure, the research and listings were easy. The problem now was deciding what kind of jutsu was best suited for him. With all of his time at the beginning and ends of each day spent either training or brainstorming, this meant he had very little free period for anything else. After a particularly exhausting Saturday, Naruto had decided to break away from his exercises and assignments to work on one of his other personal projects to clear his head. He was currently trying to perfect the formula for his new firework pellet, an explosive with a colorful kick to it that didn't just leave damage, but also emitted blinding flashes and sparklers that did even more damage. Once it was completed Naruto knew it was going to be sweet once he tried it out on something or someone. With his goggles pulled down over his eyes, the Jinchuriki pulled the spoon out of his mouth and went back to work. Ah, uh, I'll figure out the name of the jutsu later. All I want is for it to be a big one, the blonde boy said excitedly, using his utensil to measure the amount of powders he had, with the canister for the self-propelled explosive laid out on the table of his living room. It almost looked like he was running some sort of shady drug experiment, since he had all these science gimmicks lying all over the place. It was almost comical how focused he was on the thing. It was good to know that he had a substantial amount of experience in this area and knew exactly what he needed to do. Otherwise he'd be more concerned for his own safety than he was. It was a big-ass bomb after all. Naruto continued his rampant of audible thoughts while mixing the deadly cocktail between the vials. I want something flashy. Not like a blazing fireball jutsu. Naruto shook his head while tapping the contents of the tube he was holding up in front of him. It's too much burning and not enough bang. I want a jutsu that can blow people away. Something that can make people's hair stand on end. But what? His ideal jutsu had to have charisma and needed to be eye-catching, as well as simple enough for him to use sort of like an explosive tag. Shrugging his shoulders thoughtfully, Naruto reached out and randomly grabbed a flask of flash powder nearby. 
Without measuring it, he gently poured the contents into the vial in his other hand. It was about time for the final mix. Plop. Sizzle. Boom. God damn it I fucking hate Fuinjutsu. The QB roared out. The entire apartment complex was rocked by a massive explosion. Every single window of Naruto's block was blown out in a horrible flash of blinding light, scattering glass and debris all across the neighborhood. Nearby villagers out and about turned towards the building in shock, many giving out startled yelps at the sight of the discharge. Seconds later, once all the fire and embers had passed, black smoke began pouring out of every opening in the building. What was that? A shopkeeper asked while poking his head out of his stand at the side of the road. His most recent customer, an old woman sporting a hunch and a shawl, also looked towards the building in surprise. Oh my, is it New Year's already? She murmured curiously. It made sense as firework sparks were now starting to shoot out the shattered panes and were bursting into colorful flowers above the streets. It was a glorious sight to behold indeed. Inside the disaster zone though, it was a completely different story. With fixtures blown out of place, walls and furniture shredded, and every surface area within sight of the center charred a smoking coal black. The once clean experiment had transformed into a real, god-awful mess. And of course sitting in the very heart of the smoldering lounge room, a very surprised-looking Naruto sat staring at his now disintegrated workspace. His entire front burnt black with his back remaining completely untouched, leaving a hilarious outline of him in the soot on the wall behind him. The blonde blinked several times to bring himself back into consciousness. His oldish expression could clearly be seen through his cracked goggles. The startled Naruto coughed out a plume of smoke. Something tells me that that was the wrong ingredient. He then glanced at nearby wall clock and saw the time was 4.59. Naruto opened his eyes widely. Damn it. I forgot I had appointment with Sasuke. She will kill me if I'm late. Naruto stood up and rushed to the bathroom. After bathing and cleaning all the mess in his room, he immediately got the urgent appointment. Uzumaki Naruto is confident person. He always thought he could do anything as long as he didn't give up. Do I can make it? He thought as he ran as fast as his legs could carry him. That reminds me, why does Sasuke's mother want to meet me? Naruto recalled when Sasuke had approached to him, which she and even no one in his class hadn't ever done before and surprisingly, she said that her mother invited him to dinner at the Uchiha compound. Sasuke's mother so it means that she was the wife of the Uchiha clan head, Uchiha Mikoto. The Uchiha mistress wanted to meet him who was nothing more but an orphan and even an outcast in the village. Maybe they're planning to turn me and you into a weapon for them. Karama growled furiously. Those power-hungry Uchihas never give up any chance for them increasing more power and authorities. Naruto just sighed. He was really worried about his friend, Karama. I understand your anger but it doesn't mean every Uchiha are bad. By the way, the Kanoha military police force of the Uchiha clan guard the security of the village. Yeah, Karama had talked to Naruto what happened in the night of the QB attack. Not everything of course. Naruto realized that as he felt his hesitance in some details but Naruto didn't want to make it more difficult so he just passed it away. Never in his life Naruto thought that the QB attack was happened by an Uchiha or more precisely, a rogue Uchiha, maybe a female, called herself the legendary Uchiha Madoka. She had controlled the fox and caused a massive bloodbath seven years ago. No wonder Kurama had a negative opinion of Uchihas. The QB simply responded in an annoyed tone, don't be take it carelessly kit. Once you let your guard down, they will turn on and backstab you. Everything Uchiha care for is getting power as much as possible, and they want every demands to be satisfied or will do everything to get it. His eyes then looked thoughtful. The costly lesson of Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madoka is strong evidence. Naruto face faulted at that response, but he just shook his head and didn't say anything. The ancient fox was so stubborn that he could listen to him, but who could blame him? No one liked being controlled and then captured in the seal. It was not wrong that Karama hold a grudge against the legendary Uchiha Madoka and the rogue Uchiha who caused the QB attack, but Naruto wasn't a fan of labels. He could see that Uchiha Sasuke was nothing like a bad person, she wasn't very sociable though and her sister, Uchiha Izumi or ANBU Captain Weasel, who helped him many times as he was attacked by villagers. Naruto just knew her name from Hokagejiji, he had never met her yet. Anyway, you better run quickly or you will be late for the date with Uchiha Brat. Karama said with a smirk. You don't need to tell me, furball. Where is the dead last? In a park near the Uchiha compound, Sasuke was leaning against tree with an annoyed expression. It was past her daytime but a certain idiot hadn't appeared yet, and she started feeling impatient. Have patience, Emoto-chan. Maybe he's busy something and aren't you a bit early? I just didn't want to make him wait in case he got here soon. Sasuke exclaimed with a red face. By the way, why do you want to meet him when Ichan? Yup, the other one was Izumi. 
after she knew Sasuke had the appointment with Uzumaki Naruto for the dinner invitation, Izumi asked for going with her. Sasuke had no problem with that but she wondered why her sister followed her. It's not often Izumi paid attention to any males except her father, and maybe some men in her ANBU team. Even her mother was excited about this but for some reason, she felt that her mother didn't simply want to meet him because he was her friend. She didn't miss her expression when she said his name. Yo Sasuke. Sorry I'm late. A tick mark appeared on Sasuke's head when she heard the voice. He finally came. You're late you idiot. She hissed at him. Naruto chuckled, scratching the back of his head. Sorry, a black cat crossed my path so I had to go the long way. He said in an apologetic voice. Izumi's sweat dropped with his excuse. She felt something very familiar in the excuse and a certain silver-haired ANBU appeared in her head. Sasuke gritted her teeth and clenched her fists. He used a ridiculous excuse for covering his lateness? It was really hard to resist her desire to beat Naruto to a pulp but she had to. She couldn't do anything at this time. Not as her sister was here and the youngest Uchiha didn't want to make a fool of her. So all what she did. Liar! She yelled with her fingers still pointed accusingly at him but Naruto just smiled back her idiotically, which just got her angrier. At present, Naruto just noticed the presence of someone but Sasuke and him. He turned and laid eyes on the girl who was about four or five years older him and Sasuke. Taking a good look at her, Naruto totally saw her look pretty much like the youngest Uchiha. So this was Uchiha Izumi, the female prodigy of the Uchiha clan and Sasuke's older sister. However, the blonde decided to pretend not to know hi. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. It wasn't really difficult to realize the ANBU weasel's chakra from her, but he didn't think she would like to know that her identity was found out by a seven-year-old child. Izumi was watching it all with a small, amused smile. Hello, Naruto-kun. She greeted politely and Naruto nodded warily. His brain ceased functioning as he watched the Uchiha prodigy. She had silky smooth raven hair that were tied in a black ribbon and a high ponytail, and came about mid-waist length on her back. She was wearing a black shirt with the Uchiha symbol on the back and an ANBU pant. She had pale white smooth skin that shone in the sunlight. Guess Sasuke wasn't the only one with the good looks he thought with a small smile. Nice to meet you, Naruto-kun. Izumi could see the boy was quite comfortable. She waited for a little shy or even tense as he was an orphan and didn't usually contact too many people. Really an interesting boy. Nice to meet you too. He replied cheerfully. Sasuke said you're an ANBU black ops. He said with excitement. Yes. Izumi nodded. I joined in not long ago. And Nechan is just twelve. Sasuke said, feeling proud of this fact. I'm going to grow up to be just like her. She told Naruto with a smile and Naruto answered it with his giggle. Take your time at the academy, little moon. Graduating faster is not really necessary. Izumi rubbed her sister's head. Mao Nechan. The said Uchiha pouted cutely. All right, Okachan and Otasam are in home. We shouldn't keep them waiting. The elder Uchiha said and held her sister's hand. Come on, Naruto-kun, our mother really wants to meet you. Naruto and the Uchiha sisters walked down the street. All three didn't miss glares or mumbles aiming at the only boy of the trio. Naruto sighed and then just tried to ignore them. It hurt him so much but he knew that nothing he could do to change their opinions on him, at least now. For the Uchiha duo, Sasuke was confusing, wondering why villagers paid attention to them so much but she didn't tell anything. Izumi, however, fully knew the reason and couldn't stop feeling pity for the blonde. She knew that Jinchuriki had never been treated well by their village, if not be isolated completely. She still remembered how many times her team saved him from mobs and stupid civilians' wrath. Izumi frowned as she recalled the barely breathing child in her arms. If it weren't for his tenant, Naruto couldn't survive until now. When they walked through the gates of the compound, Naruto whistled at the size. Wow. So big. Of course. Sasuke said proudly and Izumi just smiled softly. The eldest Uchiha led them down the streets of the compound, past the curious members of his clan who wondered who the blonde boy was. Some realized him but they said nothing, just stared at him. He was getting odd looks because he was walking with the clan head's two daughters. He must have been important if Izumi even was leading him. And in a way, he was. Naruto was amazed at the size of the Uchiha clan head's house. It was huge. It was probably the size of a mini shiro with red tiled roofing and fancy wooden pillars. Then there was this huge garden off to the side of it that just took his breath away. They stood before the wooden gates and painted walls of a relatively modest home. The green roof tiles contrasted brilliantly against the red leaves of the maple trees. The quaint two-story house was well-maintained, beautiful in its elegance, and welcoming in its simplicity. 
The soft white paint of the wall surrounding the home blended smoothly with the gray stone foundation underneath. When inside, he followed his lead and left her shoes by the door. He followed Sasuke and Izumi into the large kitchen to see a woman who looked a lot like Sasuke. Naruto was sure that the woman was Uchiha's sister's his mom. Her black eyes darted from face to face, only to settle on his. It was there, just for a split second, but he could see the shock in her eyes. Unlike the regular looks that Naruto had received, her eyes held none of the hate. Why did she have that expression? Did they meet in somewhere? Long, dark blue hair reached the middle of her back. Spiky bangs farmed her pale, heart-shaped face. She wore a dull yellow apron over a dark purple blouse and plum-colored skirt. Even though she looked the part of a traditional housewife, Naruto had learned to look underneath the underneath. From every measured step she took to the ephemeral grace of every movement. This woman was a tried and true kunoichi. Hello? I'm Achiha Makoto, Sasuke's mother. The woman smiled, grinning like a loon but recalling his etiquette lessons from Hokagejiji and Ayumi the librarian. He gave a small bow, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Nice to meet you Uchiha-sama. Sasuke and Izumi's eyes went wide. Apparently, they didn't know that he could be respectful as they just saw him as an hyperactive idiot and the troublemaker every day. Not like they blamed him because he was an orphan after all. No, Sama, please? You can call me Makoto and I'll call you Naruto. The woman, Uchiha Makoto, smiled once more. Will you be joining us for dinner, Naruto-kun? She smiled at him almost motherly in the warmth she radiated. Ducking his head down and nodding shyly, he responded. If you will have me, my Katosin. Naruto winced a little. He didn't like the idea of calling the Uchiha mistress by her name all that much as he just met her. Hmm. I guess that will have to do for now. Mikoto told the boy as she turned back to the food she was preparing. Dinner will be done within the hour. You can go outside, but keep an ear out. Hi, Kaachan. Sasuke dragged Naruko out of the room and down the long hall. Izumi followed after them. Izumi. The three youngsters turned their heads in the direction of the voice. The sisters easily recognized the voice as that of their fathers while Naruto took in the appearance of the newcomer. Long brown hair framed his face, parted down the middle and held together in a low ponytail. Wearing a simple blue kimono shirt tied shut with a simple purple cloth belt. A pair of gray pants that reached mid-shin and purple shinobi sandals completed the look. The man had a severe expression on his face only deepened by his strong square jaw and the two creases beneath his jet black eyes. Because Sasuke looked like the Uchiha mistress, Naruto knew where Izumi got her features from. Otosama. Izumi and Sasuke bowed at the waist, a sign of deference and great respect for their father and clan head. The man, Uchiha Fugaku, nodded and looking at them with a motionless expression. Naruto frowned. He always looked like that in front of even members in his family, but it didn't really make him surprised. Naruto heard about the Uchiha clan head so much, and he thought that this man really had a big problem. He was a slave driver and set upon making Uchiha Izumi one of the strongest in the Uchiha clan before she even became Jonin. Naruto felt like the man was a bit insane, and messed up in his head. Izumi was just six when she graduated. What the hell was the man thinking? Why wouldn't he let her enjoy her childhood? Perhaps Fugaku just had the usual Uchiha complex, where he thought of him as above everyone else. Who knows? Luckily, he didn't the same thing with Sasuke, at least now he thought. Kurama snorted, a pity excuse of the father, it's obvious that he just used his daughter for this pity clan's getting power. Fuck it, he even are worse than Madoka, he said in disgusting tone. Naruto didn't tell but he mentally agreed with the fox. Fugaku turned to look Naruto, he narrowed his eyes in seconds before the emotionlessness returning again. It didn't stop the blonde from assuming the worst, talking to Mikoto that I'm not going to dinner. With that, Fugaka left without even looking back the boy. Naruto supposed he was nothing in his eyes, but he felt more comfortable then. Kami. Talk about high-strung tension. And that attitude, this was his daughter he was telling. Does there need to be very cold like that? Naruto met some other clan heads and most of them was stern and authority, but no one had resting bitch face like Uchiha Fugaku. Not that he dared to say that in the man's presence. All right. Lunch is ready. Unlike Sasuke who was practically bouncing in her seat with excitement over the mouth-watering homemade fare spread out across the table. Naruto waited patiently for Izumi to take her seat beside Mikoto. Where is Fugaku? Mikoto asked as she didn't see her husband. Otosama said that he wasn't going to dinner Okasan. Izumi replied, Naruto could notice her dissatisfaction with the absence of the Uchiha clan head. Mikoto sighed tiredly, I see. She then picked up her own chopsticks alongside her daughters and Naruto did the same thing. Itadakimasa. 
The dinner was surprisingly peaceful. Sasuke, behaving like the average child, completely hated the idea of eating vegetables, pushing them aside on her plate. Naruto, on the other hand, ate his without complaint. How could he complain when they actually taste good? Comparing with leftover foods he had usually eaten when he had been in the orphanage, they were edible. Sasuke, eat your vegetables instead of pushing them to the side. That would be Mikoto telling her to eat those veggies. For the thirteenth time. Naruto. Eat your eh? Finished. Naruto wish he had a camera. What he wouldn't give to capture the look of shock on Mikoto's face when she saw his pickled daikin dish empty. Humph. At least one of you likes my cooking enough to eat their veggies. That only prompted the youngest Uchiha to stick out her tongue at her mother and toss an annoying glare at him. Man, it was not like his fault as she didn't eat her vegetables. Caught between an apathetic Naruto and Sasuke was Izumi, happily eating her meal. Occasionally, she would pick out a morsel of food from the main serving plate and drop it on either his or Sasuke's bowl. It was such an older sister thing to do that he accepted every bite without complaint. Naruto-kun? Mikoto's voice clearly cut through the silence. Naruto looked up. I heard about you from Sasuke. Thank you for taking care of her. I'm glad she has a friend in the academy. Okasan. Sasuke groaned and Naruto chuckled at that which made the little Uchiha glared him. Don't laugh, you idiot. Don't think I forgave you for being late. She growled at him. Naruto raised his hand for defending Mama. I'm so sorry. I was busy a little and my home is a long way from the park, so it took a while to get to you. This grabbed the attention of both Makoto and Izumi. Where do you live? Izumi asked. I live alone in a small apartment in the west of the village. The blonde said, with a point of sadness. I'm an orphan. My parents were shinobi and they died fighting the Kyubi. I was in there after I was kicked out of the orphanage when I was four. The silence that settled over the table was most uncomfortable. A quick look around him, the shock expression on Sasuke's face. Izumi narrowed her eyes and Mikoto. He could say that she wasn't pleased or more precisely, she was furious. Her hand was holding the teacup so tightly that her knuckles were white and it looked like it might shatter any moment. What did he say anything to piss her off? Excuse me? The Uchiha mistress finally said, putting down her cup and rising elegantly, I have a meeting to attend to. And she strode out of the room. Sasuke and Izumi looked after her worriedly while Naruto was curious. I feel a bit bad for your old man Kit. The fox commented sheepishly. What do you mean Karama? Why does she go to Jig? I can only say that she wants the truth Kit. Unknown to them, Izumi stole a glance at the boy, wondering anything he had to do to her mother's attitude. Four hours later, where are all these paperwork coming from? The Sandame Hokage groaned inwardly as he looked down at the hundredth file he has had to read so far. The old man was happy that Kanoha was getting a steadily increasing amount of missions, but the work was becoming overwhelming. His eyes were starting to water after such long hours of reading. Minato, the Hokage thought as he looked up at a picture of his predecessor, who looked so young in the frame. It's not like that's your fault but the hole you leave is really large. I'm too old for this position and don't act with decisiveness to solve everything and protect this village and your son. The elderly Hokage would often look inside the academy classrooms to check on the progress of many young ninja, and Naruto would usually catch his eyes. Over the years Hiruzen's worry for the Uzumaki boy had become more and more. The village had despised him as much as possible. Maybe they didn't dare to do anything bad to him when he was there but he knew there was always something after him aiming at the poor boy. Most of villagers persecuted him as a monster, the Kyubi that had attacked and nearly destroyed Konoha. Excuse me, Hokage-sama. But Mikoto-sama wished to see you, the voice of the receptionist that broke the Hokage out of his thoughts came. After clearing his throat, the old man replied. Please ask her in. The large double doors parted and the familiar face of Uchiha Mikoto appeared in front of the elderly leader. He had known the Uchiha matriarch since she was a little girl and Namike's Minato's teammate. He had watched her grow into a powerful Uchiha Jounin and transform into a loving mother of two daughters. Like many others in the village, Mikoto was like Sarutobi's own child. With a smile on his face, Hiruzen nodded at the woman. Hello Mikoto-san, how can I help you today? The Uchiha had a perplexed expression on her face as she looked down at the ground. I need to ask you something, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen immediately noticed her strange behavior and nodded again. Please take a seat. Mikoto sighed and pulled out the chair for themselves before sitting down. What do you need to ask me? Hokage-sama. Mikoto looked up into the Hokage's eyes and rested her hands on his desk. I want to ask about Uzumaki Naruto. The Hokage became tensing once he heard the name from Mikoto, but he quickly covered it up with his stoic expression. What questions do you have about that boy? 
he asked with a calm voice. I want the truth about him Hokage-sama, she replied coldly. The Hokage had a million guesses but he still played it like he didn't know, Uzumaki Naruto's an orphan and the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. He's in same class with your youngest daughter by chance. I can make sure that nothing bad will happen to Sasuke-chan if she contacts with him. Please don't play dumb with me Hokage-sama. You know exactly what I mean. Mikoto said hotly is Naruto there. Mikoto was cut off of her sentence, as Hiruzen raised a finger to his lips while carrying an extremely serious expression. She watched as he weave a hand seal that resulted in a slight hum to go through the entire room. From what the Uchiha mistress knew, she assumed the Hokage activated a silencing seal in the room. Hiruzen released the sigh and looked directly at Mikoto. I did foreknow all of this. In fact, it's just a matter of time before you figures it out. Yeah, Naruto is the son of Minato Kuin and Kushinichan, but this is a SS rank secret and only a much selected few are privy to such knowledge. Mikoto felt a little intimidating by the aura the Hokage was emitting, but held her ground. He looks like mini clone of Minato and has the same last name as Kushina. Mikoto whispered as she leaned forward on the desk. I've known both of them all my life, so I think we're capable of discovering such a secret by ourselves. She then looked at the Hokage, and it won't take long for other clan heads finding out Sandame San. She succeeded. I know and they came to meet me before you. Hiruzen sighed and closed his eyes for a few seconds. It's the Ino Shikacho trio. The Ino Shikacho trio was very close to Minato and Shikaku was a genius from the Nara clan. It was totally easy for him to realize something and naturally. He would tell two clan heads of the Akimichi clan and Yamanaka clan. Mikoto felt her anger grew as she glared a little at the old man. Why didn't you tell us about him? The woman hissed angrily. I could have given him a home and a family. He could have grown up with people who really care for him. I understand how you feel. Believe me, not only you but Shikaku. And Noichi and Chuja willing to adopt the boy and I really want to allow that but it would have caused a lot of attention to be directed to him. Haruzen stated seriously. All what I can allow, you can get close to him but make sure you don't tell him anything about Minato or Kushina. The Hokage leaned forward on his desk and stared at the Uchiha. This is extremely important Mikoto. You mustn't tell anybody about Naruto's parentage, not even Fugaku. This is all for Naruto's own protection. But, please Mikoto. The Hokage interrupted her. This is the best decision, and it had clearly done the job for the past years. By the way, you still can take care of Naruto as his acquaintance by the way. Hokage-sama Mikoto looked at the old man. Although she didn't want to admit, he was right this time. I understand. No one will know but me. She replied emotionlessly. The Sandame sighed. He knew she was displeasure but there was no other way. Do not make me regret this decision, Mikoto. He rubbed his temples then smiled softly. Take good care of the kid for me. Hi, Hokage-sama. Disclaimer. I own nothing. All rights go to Masashi Kishimoto. One year later. It has been one year since the first coming of Naruto with the Uchiha family. And just like every Sunday he found himself in the same spot. Which was of course on top of a certain Uchiha princess. No, not like that. Ever since their first fight, Uchiha Sasuke made it a personal mission to challenge Naruto to a spar every Sunday at the same exact training ground. Naruto had considered changing place. But he didn't found any reason for it since those little spars were a good workout in Naruto's opinion. And even Kyuubi had said that it was a good opportunity for Naruto to train with someone else besides him. So the young blonde had accepted the spar every time Sasuke challenged him. And of course she had yet to win one. So it was not surprised that we can find Naruto, now ten years old, on top of Sasuke's back. Her arm once again twisted in her back and a frustrated expression in her cute face. Do you yield? Naruto asked, still a little of humor in his voice with a foxy grin. After all this was his favorite way of ending the spars. It was also the way the Uchiha girl hated more. Yes you baka, now get off me before I burn you. Sasuke threatened half-heartedly before releasing an annoyed sigh. The blonde boy was fast to comply. And just like the first time they spared he offered his hand to help her get up. Only this time she actually accepted with the smallest of smiles appearing on her lips. Naruto then sat in the ground and started meditating which he found really relaxing after sparing. Meanwhile Sasuke just stood there, looking at Naruto before releasing a sigh and going to a tree in which she could rest under its shadows. Two of them just stayed there in a peaceful silence. But of course everything had to come to an end at some point. So Makoto Basin and Izumi Nichin argued with the Gakusama and elders in the Uchiha clan again? Naruto spoke out. Izumi was really nice to him as she taught him some useful skills and he unexpectedly called her Nechan. Izumi also didn't mind it. In fact, Naruto saw she was satisfied as he did that. Sasuke just sighed tiredly. Yeah, and they are growing more intense every day. 
I can see how much Okasan is stressed after the meeting between members. Wanichan is always very tired and I don't know anything. I'm not ready to join those meetings at least that's what Okasan told me. Suzuki said firmly, her gaze once again in her blonde friend. Yes, friend, she never thought she would ever call this guy that. But after one year on sparring every Sunday and actually talking to him after that she actually found he was not that bad of a guy. Although it annoyed her that he acted like a kid and often teased her whenever he had a chance, she started liking his presence even more after that incident. What happened was actually simple. A year ago during their normal training routine, meaning Naruto beating her easily, she twisted her ankle really bad to the point she could not really move without feeling a lot of pain. So Naruto being the gentleman he was decided to actually carry her to her house like a freaking princess, which found protest from the young Uchiha who had a blush during the entire trip. But it wasn't like she could really do anything. So after a few minutes they both finally reached to her house. Naruto helped her to get inside and when he asked about the other members of her family she just told him that she was going to be alone for that day and that he should just leave. But of course he didn't. Saying that someone that's hurt should not be alone like this so he decided to actually stay and take care of her. Which got another blush and more protest from the young Uchiha but Naruto would have none of that. So after treating her injury as best as he could he actually cooked her lunch and dinner and stayed in the house until it was really late just to make sure that she didn't do anything stupid while injured. At the end of the day Sasuke simply asked why was he doing all of this for her. He blinked for a while, then smiled softly, and his answer had made her brain stop for a whole minute just there. That's what friends are for, aren't they? And since that day Sasuke actually found herself waiting for Sunday to spar and then speak to him. In the academy, she still seated herself beside him and sometimes talked to him, which indirectly made Naruto fanboys send me. They even ate lunch together every day. Don't worry so much. Naruto said softly. I believe everything will be fine. Makoto Obeisen is very intelligent. She and Izumi Nichin will surely find the way to solve those problems. Hope so. Sasuke answered aimlessly. Looking at her expression, Naruto knew he should stop talking about this topic. This wasn't the first time he heard about quarrels in the Uchiha clan. Sasuke was eight but she was still a part of the Uchiha clan, more or less affecting her. Anyways, you're making progress in your taijutsu. I think I should reward you something. Naruto said with a foxy grin. Sasuke couldn't help but to look away after hearing that, with a small blush on her face. Th thank you. I could do that if why you didn't help mean why you don't need to give me anything. You helped me so much. She said, started to play with her hair nervously. Nah, I insist. In addition, I'm sure you will like this reward and it will help you so much in your ninja career in the future. What do you mean? Naruto smirked, and his answer then made the Uchiha girl couldn't help but feeling surprised and a little excited. I will help you awake your Sharingan, the Hokage Tower. The Sandame Hokage sat at his desk doing paperwork. Haruzen was trying to find ways to keep himself awake by doing one of the more mundane aspects of being Hokage. He was, however, more focused on the door to his office. The man was currently waiting for a specific shinobi to arrive so that he could have a discussion with him. After the Sandame finished a whole stack of paperwork, he heard a knock on the door. Enter. Haruzen spoke up as he moved his paperwork to the side of his desk. The Sandame Hokage watched as the door to his office opened. An Anbu with the weasel mask walked into the room walk to the center of the room before bowing to the Hokage. You can take off your mask, Izumi, and have a seat. I have many things we need to discuss. Haruzen said, understood. The Umbu nodded. The young girl removed her mask, revealing onyx eyes and jet black hair. The Umbu operative, Uchiha Izumi, proceeded to sit down in a chair in front of Haruzen's desk. How are you, Izumi? Do you have anything to report yourself? Haruzen questioned. Izumi nodded. Yes, Hokage-sama. I just left the compound after the meeting between members in the Uchiha clan. My father and some elders really purposed to make a coup against you and Kanoha. Haruzen sighed. He should have known this. The Uchiha clan, ever since the Kyubi attack, had been treated negatively by a good portion of the Kanoha shinobi. They were under suspicion as possible instigators of the fox's attack. Due to this discrimination and suspicion, the clan had started to resent Kanoha and its ideals and were planning to act appropriately. Are all Uchiha clan's members in agreement? Haruzen asked as he massaged his temples. Not really Hokage-sama. My mother and some people in the clan argued strongly against the coup. The Uchiha girl said calmly. I see. Haruzen contemplated. Mikoto was Minato's teammate before and Kushina's best friend. I suppose she is influenced to some extent by them. Is there any more information you have heard? Izumi shook her head. The clan is being secretive about who they let know information, even amongst the conspirators. 
The Umbu operative paused in his speech for a few seconds before speaking again. I believe they are starting to suspect that I am leaking information of the coup. The Sandame sighed in response again. Action was going to be needed soon. All right, thank you for your information. He said in a stoic voice. Keep following and reporting me their activities personally and to no one else. Thankfully, Mikoto-san is against this, so we still have the chance to stop a civil war. I also shall try and find a peaceful solution to this and hope Fugaku regains his senses and discuss it with the elders. He said seriously. Hi Hokage-sama. She said. He nodded and said dismissed. Izumi disappeared from his office. Hiruzen let out a tired sigh as he gazed upon the village. He knew that the elders would make a fuss over it and ask for the execution of the whole Uchiha clan, especially Danzo and Fufil some hidden agenda of his. He lit his pipe and blew out smoke. What will I have to do to this? So how did Izumi Nichin get her Sharingan? Sasuke shook her head. I just knew that Wanichan got that after a mission and I heard that one of her teammate was killed in front of her. Now she achieved one of the highest levels of the Sharingan, which was previously thought to be impossible. She said in awe. So it's similar to what I know from Kurama Naruto thought while still looking at his Uchiha friend, Sharingan is awakened by strong emotions from the user, typically negative ones, and Izumi Nichin's Sharingan is in the highest level, it means she get Manjiku Sharingan. How could she get it to evolve whatever I will find out later? Naruto created a clone, okay. I can make these pretty durable, as long as it's a small number of them. A few hits won't get rid of it. Sasuke gave him a what? Look, the blonde boy pointed to the clone, kill me. He said in a command voice, Sasuke backpedaled. No, Naruto sighed, this would be difficult. Girl, it's a clone. Not the real me. Now kill it. He scoffed. I can't. The raven-haired girl glared at the ground and refused to look at him. Why not? It's only a clone Heim. Besides, this'll help you when we actually have to do a mission and we have to kill. So kill it. I can't kill my best friend. She yelled angrily. Come on, Sasuke. It's only a clone. I'm not going to die for real. If you don't buck up, I'll kick your ass. Friend or not. Sasuke still didn't do anything. Suppose I have to do it the hard way. I'm sorry. Sasuke he charged to the young girl and attacked her, and Sasuke fought back to defend herself. Naruto threw a kunai into her, Sasuke caught that kunai it, and attacked him with ferocity without knowing why she did that. Naruto was pretty good at dodging, missing the swipes of the kunai and landing hits of his own. She still landed hits as well. Sasuke managed to get a good slice to his neck and watched as actual blood poured out of the wound. Sasuke widened her eyes, no, she watched as Naruto sunk to the ground. More blood coming from the wound. Naruto, his hair and face and shirt were drenched in blood. So much blood, and it was soaking his shirt. His hand was clutching his neck as he gasped for air. Sasuke dropped to her knees beside him and yelled, What happened to you, Dove? You always avoid it easily. Nice movian very quick. The girl placed her hand over his as she tried to stop the blood flow. You idiot! Breath. No! Don't close your eyes. Please, Naruto, Bill Befeinheim. Naruto mumbled as his blue eyes dulled in focus. Sasuke could feel her heart pounding. Her friend's eyes were closing and she could feel his pulse slowing. The blood kept coming, covering her pants as she pulled him closer and tried to stop it from coming out. Why was there so much blood? She began to hyperventilate. His eyes closed finally and his body went limp. Naruto! Naruto! No! No, 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 and oh. Her hands began to shake as tears came to her eyes. Naruto had no pulse, no pulse, no pulse, no pulse, no pulse, ha 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 ha. Sasuke's eyes burned and her head was aching. But she didn't care about that. She just accidentally killed her best friend. How could he do it? Why would he go through such a thing just to help her? Why? The tears overflowed and Sasuke hated himself. She was still so weak. Naruto was dead because she was weak. Because she wasn't like her older sister. It was all her fault. Naruto was dead. Dead. Sasuke gripped her head as she panicked. How could she do that to her best friend? She was no better than a monster. Sasuke. Now she was hearing his voice. Sasuke. The guilt of her actions crept over Sasuke. She was a murderer. She should be locked away. Uchiha Sasuke. What? She looked up to see Naruto standing there. Like nothing was wrong. She looked down at the Naruto in her lap and gaped when it disappeared in a puff of smoke. How? The one you were arguing with was a clone as well. I was over there the whole time. Naruto pointed to the trees. 
Sasuke looked at her bloodied hands and the blood on the ground. She was shaking horribly and her tears were coming even faster. She didn't kill him, Naruto sighed. Look, I'm sorry that I had you believe that I was dead, but I wanted to test something he was cut off when Sasuke wrapped her arms around him as tight as she could. Never do that to me. Ever again. You don't know how horrible that was. I thought I had killed you Naruto. Something like that can mess with your mind. I was horrified. I thought I had killed my best friend. She hiccuped. The Uzumaki patted her back as she calmed down. I'm sorry. Why did you do it? She pulled away slightly, watching his eyes. A good reason, I promise. Naruto pulled something out of his jacket and opened it. Holding it out to the Uchiha. Sasuke glanced at it. It was a mirror and staring back at her was a pair of red eyes with two tomos. It was the Sharingan. She collapsed, taking the blonde boy with her. You did all that just to see if I'd get the power? Naruto nodded. Sorry, Sasuke. I didn't think it would affect you that much. Naruto, you are my best and only friend. I'm not on pretty good terms with everyone from our class except you. To watch your only friend die right before you and know that you're the cause of it is horrible. It's the kind of trauma that can screw you up inside, Sasuke explained as her heart calmed down. I was terrified and I felt the deepest of hatred for myself because of it. Please Naruto, never do that again, even if it's for a good reason, Naruto sighed, okay. I'm really sorry, she sighed as they lay there. Just give me a few moments to get over this, I'm still shaking. They lay there for a few minutes as Sasuke finally relaxed. I think I'm good, that's a relief. Can I get up now? The Uchiha flushed, realizing that she'd been holding Naruto for the past several minutes. Yeah. She moved her arms and he sat up. How about you go home and rest? We have our class tomorrow. Naruto offered her a hand and Sasuke accepted. They both stood. I'm going to back to my home now, so I'll see you tomorrow. I'm really sorry Sasuke. She shook her head, it's okay. Thank you for helping me get the Sharingan. Just promise you won't do that again. Naruto raised a hand, I promise. If I break it, I'll never eat ramen again. She smirked. That idiot would definitely keep that promise if he brought ramen into it. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, though. Sure thing, Haim. Sasuke watched as he ran off. That had to have been the worst day ever. The Uchiha compound. Izumi. Izumi, upon entering her house in the Uchiha clan estate after coming back from the ninja academy, was immediately greeted by her father, Uchiha Fugaku. As usual, she watched Naruto and as she saw him with Sasuke, she decided to leave and go the Hokage Tower before coming back her home. The man was leaning against the doorway to the house, still fully dressed. Otosama. The Uchiha girl bowed to the man upon seeing him. You went out for so long. Fugaku replied, a slight displeased tone to his voice. Where were you? I've been looking for you for the past few hours. Izumi resisted the urge to frown. Forgive me. I went to Hokage-sama to discuss something with him. Needing to Hokage-sama again, huh? Fugaku grumbled, his words sounding almost poisonous. He continued to speak, this time louder. Well, what then? What was so important that you had to find him frequently? Is there something wrong with the ANBU meeting their Hokage to Sama? She answered with a stoic voice. Fugaku's eyebrows drew together as he frowned. Izumi, I hope you didn't do what I think you did. You should know every decision I made for our clan's own good, and you're also an Uchiha. Izumi said nothing, instead she just took off her sandals and then passed Fugaku. She didn't even look at his eyes. You are my daughter and a part of this clan, and you will act like it. The man snapped. You have acted without my knowledge too many times. Such disobedience is unlike you, Izumi. Whatever you say, Otosama. She replied coldly. Fugaku's eyes narrowed as he tried to figure out whether Izumi was being sarcastic. It was difficult because she delivered the lines in her usual calm monotone, and let nothing show on her face. You know your actions reflect upon the clan so the clan does wish to have a say in them. The elders are not as upset as they would have been had your actions not been in line with their wishes. You are an ANBU now, and we had hoped for you to be eventually. Yes, I know Izumi thought with a slight mental sneer. It is good that there is an Uchiha in the Hokage's elites. Fugaku continued. He pinned his oldest daughter with a look that was meant to be cowing but she was unaffected. You realize your position now. You are the pipe connecting the clan with the village. Do you understand? The words themselves were pretty innocuous. Izumi was a link between the two, all right. But reading behind Fugaku's words revealed the truth. The Uchiha clan head wanted information to flow through that pipe, from Kanoha to the Uchiha. Izumi was a spy. This was it. 
This was where Izumi encountered her difficult decision between village and family. Acquiesce, and allow the Uchiha to believe her theirs, or stand, and throw a wrench in their works? Izumi inhaled, closing her eyes. No, she said softly. Across from her, Figaka froze. What did you say? The Uchiha clan head's voice was low and disbelieving. Izumi's head lifted. She met her father's eyes fearlessly. I said no, Otosama. I am not a pipe connecting the clan to the village. You imply that the two are separate entities. I disagree. The village is the clan, the clan is the village. We are a part of Kanoha, there should be no need for anyone to act as a bridge. Izumi started walking. It troubles me that you cannot see that. With that, the Uchiha heiress bowed shallowly, turned, and left, all before Fugaka could collect himself from his shock at being denied outright by his daughter. Izumi walked sedately to the outer porch of the house, and from there, shunshined off the compound in a couple of bounds. She stopped once she was enclosed by the thick canopy trees of one of Kanoha's many parks, and leaned heavily against the nearby trunk, trembling slightly. It was becoming even more difficult to contain her emotions around her father. Izumi really wanted to show her anger and frustration to Fugaku and Uchiha elders. Thinking about what could happen, think about the disaster Fugaku was leading the clan into Izumi was beyond simple anger. The Uchiha girl took a couple deep, calming breaths. Losing control now would only made a mess of it. Izumi sighed and tilted her head back, staring through the gaps in the foliage above her. The sky was a delicate, pure blue, free of clouds. Almost peaceful, Izumi walked into the family garden. A nice place to go when she needed some time to himself. Coming to the pond, she noticed Sasuke was kneeling by the water, watching the water. She looked depressed. Sasuke, are you okay? She asked worriedly. Her little sister looked up, and she could see that pain and fear in those eyes. Something happened today when Ichan, the Uchiha heiress, took a seat beside her. What was it? Naruto. The elder Uchiha looked at the girl, who in turn, was looking at her hands. At the blood that was dried on them. Is he okay? Did you two spar today? The girl nodded her head and sighed. We sparred a little and then he said he wanted to reward me for my progression. Izumi quirked a brow. Looked like Naruto and Sasuke was closer much more. That was good thing, but it didn't explain why her sister was so depressed. Sasuke sighed once more, Naruto wanted to test if I can get Sharingan, so Izumi listened intently, he created a clone and told me to kill it. Understanding overcame Izumi. She knew her little sister. No way Sasuke could bring herself to kill her best friend, even if it was a clone. He threatened to attack if I didn't fight the clone, and he did that then as I didn't do anything. I didn't have a choice but fight back and something went wrong. Izumi jerked when Sasuke's voice shook. She looked over her appearance again. The fear in her eyes, the small, barely noticeable shaking. She didn't write. There was blood everywhere. I lost it and started screaming and crying while he's telling me he'd be fine. Then, his pulse was gone and there was this horrible pain and it burned. Sasuke looked into Izumi's eyes then, and the elder Uchiha reeled back. The Sharingan. Which meant she had actually killed the boy. Shit! How was this going to turn out? Especially with how her sister was acting. I lost it and the tears came even harder than before. Just then, I heard his voice. The kid was hallucinating too. Naruto pretended to let me kill him. He used his clone and did it to try and activate my Sharingan. He was standing there. No blood and looking perfectly fine. When Ichan, I was never so scared before. It was horrible. I thought I had killed him. And then, there she was. The youngest Uchiha was shaking even more as tears fell from her eyes. I know he's alive but the whole thing really scared me. I killed my best friend only to find out it wasn't real. Izumi let out the breath, she didn't know she was holding. Naruto was alive. A horrible way to awaken the Sharingan, but surprisingly effective. Her sister was just suffering some severe PTSD. She reached out and poked the girl's forehead. Sasuke froze and looked at her. Did you just poke me? If he's alive, then you don't have to worry. Go inside, get some rest before dinner. Clean up. Tomorrow. I'll teach you how to use the Sharingan. As expected, Sasuke's mood brightened and she nodded before running to the house. Well, she's really close to him, eh? Yes, Okasan. Just looking at her reaction. What Naruto did had quite a negative effect on her. Izumi stated with a sigh. I need to talk to him about this tomorrow, maybe more punishment. Oh God, what did that boy think? Sasuke may have nightmare tonight. Makoto nodded with a snicker, before she became serious. I have something to discuss you Izumi-chan, she said firmly. 
about the coup d'etat of the Uchiha clan and what we need to do to deal with it, after the sparring with Sasuke and helping her awake the Sharingan. Naruto didn't come back home and decided to go to the library, after greeting the librarian Ayumi, who just replied by her own great and soft smile, he went straight to his base on the upstairs. Naruto closed the door carefully before approaching bookshelves and took some books, most of them was historical ones. Kurama raised his eyebrow at that. Don't you always read ninjutsu or fuinjutsu once? Why suddenly taking an interest on history in that book the fox said, glancing at the book with the Uchiha symbol on the cover, its writer was Uchiha Kagami, eh? There is something I need to find out more. The blonde replied, still keeping on collect books, the more I contact to Suzuki, Mikoto Basin and Izumi Nichin, the more I realized many mysteries of the Uchiha clan, especially their bloodline, Sharingan. I want to know more the history of them. Senju Tobarama's information is useful but not really enough. Most of them was warns about the dangers of the Uchiha clan if they got many power. It was not like Naruto disrespect the Naidame Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. But the blonde felt that he could be a little guarded of the allied clan. The QB snorted, I can tell you about them you know. He grumbled with a tone that Naruto was sure that the ancient fox was sulking. Naruto facepalmed, and hearing more about your ego with the Uchiha clan? No thanks. He replied, ignored a very loud and aggressive growl from the fox. Anyway, you used to say that in the first awakened, each Sharingan usually will have only one tomo, but in Sasuke's case, I saw it. She immediately gained two tomos in each of her eyes. Kurama said in a serious tone, it's very rare and if I remember right, her older sister is also similar. And Izumi Nichin is one of the strongest kunoichi and an ANBU captain in the village now. Man, I think I can see what Sasuke will become in the future. Naruto commented with a soft smile. He took the book and started reading. Let's see Manjiku Sharingano, it's here. Naruto focused on the page of the book, he looked interested to draws on it. Wow, many different forms of Manjiku. This is Uchiha Izuki's, that is Uchiha Baru's, probably greatly varied. And Naruto narrowed his eyes as he saw words. Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, what's that? He rubbed his chin thoughtfully. Hey Kurama, do you know about this? The fox just sighed in annoyance. Ask me first we'll do everything more easy than reading boring book, and you just do now. He then answered, of course I know. Madoka used to use it to control me after all. He stated with a growl, like you know, Manjiku Sharingan is an advanced form of the Sharingan that has only been activated by a handful of Uchiha. It retains all of the Sharingan's generic abilities and grants powerful abilities. Uchiha assumed it's a gift for growing power. Manjiku Sharingan takes various forms and there was a calm silence before Kurama continued, which made Naruto feel curious, but he still let his partner continue. The fox closed his eyes, trying to hold his discomfort. And it is initially awakened by the trauma suffered from witnessing unimaginable emotional pain, example the death of someone close to the user. However, some Achiha mistakenly believe that they just got it once they killed their closest people so they I think you know it. Kurama completed with an angry growl. Damn, he really hated whenever he thought about it. It wasn't like he was feeling pity for Uchiha bastards. Meanwhile, it wasn't difficult to see Naruto's brow cold with sweat. He was looking at Manjiku Sharingan in the page with profound mixed emotions. Yes, he could guess what those Uchiha did and it disgusted him. There was no denying that Manjiku holding extraordinary powers, so it was no wonder many Uchiha lust for it. But as far as the cost of the deaths of their closest people, more like a curse than a gift. Wait a minute. What about eternal Manjiku Sharingan? The tailed beast just snorted. I don't know about it much. I only can say it's like the stronger form of mange cure, at least what I think. Kurama recalled the past. He too were fed up with them though. Madoka said that it's proof and Uchiha has continued to push forward despite experiencing great losses before that bitch used those cursed eyes to control me. He said with hatred in his tone. This might be bad. The blonde boy replied quietly. Naruto still listened to Kurama's words carefully while still kept on turning the page. According to information on it. A certain number of Uchiha activated Manjiku, but there was only Uchiha Madoka got eternal Manjiku Sharingan. This was so weird. Naruto thought of Uchiha Izumi. Sasuke said that her Sharingan was in the highest level. It wasn't really right though. She, of course, didn't know about eternal Manjiku Sharingan so it was understandable. The Uzumaki wondered what kind of trauma Izumi went through to awake her Manjiku. Losing someone close to you, it was nothing more than a nightmare and Sasuke. Kit, I hope you don't think about stupid things such as helping that little Uchiha brat activating Manjiku Sharingan. Naruto snapped out of his thought as the Tali beast spoke out. You know how dangerous it is. Don't even think of the trick you just used. 
It's totally useless, the fox said dryly. Naruto sighed in annoyance, he should have known it. The fox was really attentive, I'm not going to do that now. Maybe in the next few years as Sasuke was at least a chunin, but now Naruto looked at Hibuk, I don't think I may do that. No way Sasuke will kill her family, and I never harmed to her family just to help her get Manjikyu. I also don't know what kind of trauma is worse than losing our closest people. It seemed impossible. Maybe it's really just her family at least now. Karama whispered to himself. And Naruto and that Uchiha brat that feeling Hashirama and Madoka Ashura and Izuha no way. Alright, I think we should pause here. Naruto suddenly spoke out. I want to research more information but Sharingan problems really puzzle my head. We will go to relax a little. Leaving the library, Naruto took to the forest to follow up on one of his other favorite pastimes, foraging. Though he didn't seem like the type, as of late it has become one of his many acts of habit. You never know that how many things the nature can teach you was what Naruto read from the book he found in his secret room in the library, and he must admit that it was totally right. After making friends with much of the wildlife surrounding his village and getting to know the ways of the woods, the Uzumaki had been able to absorb more skills and knowledge in the forests. The amount of free time he was able to spend with the monkey tribes and animals of Konoha's lands taught him many things, like a lot of the moves he used in his taijutsu style, how to survive with nothing at all, what plants were good for eating, what weren't, what things could kill you, what things could save your life, and by extension the ability to talk to a lot of creatures that hadn't developed the ability to commune through human speech. Naruto knew where to go when he was in trouble, he knew how to make makeshift homes, he knew how to hide, how to run, how to swing, how to climb, how to use his feet as hands, basically anything a wild animal could do. This also explained his extraordinary fighting sense, incredible high level of timing, speed and body strength. I have to say that you build up a lot of body strength over the years hanging with the monkey's kit. Karama commented. Yeah. The writer of those books is surely an awesome ninja. I learned many useful things from them, even basic ones. Naruto replied with a foxy grin. You will be more surprised when you know the writer of that book much more? The fox thought with a smirk. Don't forget that I taught me to kit, and it's not like everyone have the honor to be instructed by the mighty Karama-sama. Karama said proudly. Ya yeah, ya yeah, for balls sensei Naruto mocked. Shut up you brat. Karama grumbled and Naruto just laughed. Weaving himself a bag from long grass, leaves and vines, Naruto began a long walk about of the thickest part of the woods. Scurrying up trees, digging through bushes, searching crevasses, he left no stone unturned in his search for the best things the natural world could provide. Within half an hour he was able to grab a whole sack full of stuff, even some rare goodies. Well you know you were gonna make a fortune if you sell them for a good price back home. Karama inferred while he looked at stuffs. Come on, I'm not the merchant, and I'm also not interested in money. Naruto answered with a sigh. Beside, you're a tailed beast, you don't need money so they will be belong to me if I sell them. Touché. The fox pouted but Naruto ignored him and got back to his work. While Naruto was picking mushrooms from a wide clearing and humming a pleasant tune, he suddenly noticed further up the hillside something out of place. Depositing what he had in his hands into his basket, he left it on the ground where it was and went over to the area in question to check out. What they found up the path was a ruined patch of land scarred from what could only be described as an intense battle. There were craters punched all over the place, chunks blasted out of trees, gashes and scars carved into the land and wood, and scorch marks burned here and there. There was also traces of blood, never a good sign. Perplexed, the blonde ran a hand over a particularly large scar in a tree. Looks like something happened. Naruto said, it's quite new, that means they have just been here for a short time. Karama deduced, observing traces of blood. They led towards the waterfall. It's not hurt to check a little, right? Naruto asked, just be careful, Kit. The fox became serious. We can't know their ally or enemy. I know Karama. After running for some time, Naruto met a small waterfall, only two stories tall and one of the many that dotted Kanoha's beautiful landscape. This one was fed into by the Naka River. The serpentine ink blue waters that twined their way almost mid through the Uchiha district, but it was far enough from the main branch that it was safely outside of clan grounds. The waterfall fed into crystal clear springs, dotted with wet, mossy rocks and surrounded by crisp blades of grass that stood like a disciplined row of soldiers flattened back by the brisk autumn breeze. It's strange, no one is here, Naruto said after looking around. This doesn't make sense. The blood is still new, there is surely someone he checked around carefully. He then caught something in his sight. Naruto looked up. A figure was thrown like a broken rag doll through the air, arcing backwards into a near-perfect U-shape. 
Before breaking through the waterfall barrier and brutally hitting the ashy volcanic rock, there was a sickening crunch sound of jarred broken bones grinding against one another, and then the figure toppled, face forward, a puppet with strings cut, down into the shallow water. From where that person landed, ripples of blood-tinted water spread. What is that? Naruto, now hit after a big tree, focused entirely on the scene in front of him. Looking up at the top of the waterfall, the blonde boy realized there were two other figures in there. They were clad entirely in black. None of their skin could be seen, from the hands covered in leather gloves to the face hidden behind their mask. Each of them was holding a sword. After looking down a little, they turned around and strode away. Waiting for two figure disappearing, Naruto slowly came out of the shadow of the tree. He looked around the area carefully, and once he was sure that he was alone, he ran toward the injured person. Hey are you okay? Naruto asked quickly once he was next to that person. Are you still holy shit? Naruto yelled. Okay, I suppose we have some troubles here. Kurama said when he looked at the face of the injured, his eyes narrowed. What the hell is happening? Naruto mouthed. Izumi frowned as she ghosted from shadow to shadow, using the shade of the canopy to mask her movements. There was something wrong with this boy, she just knew it. But no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't quite put a finger on it. Whenever she was around him, her instincts constantly nagged at her, telling nay, demanding her to be cautious of a eight-year-old boy. She heeded its whispers without exemption. Her instincts have saved her life many a time in the field as an ANBU operative. This would be no different. Even now, as she methodically searched the forests around training ground six, she could hear the discordant voice of her sixth sense, telling her to be careful. Her sense of danger kept itself alive in the back of her mind, prickling her skin with electric fire. He was close. Left, her sixth sense whispered. Snap! Right, her danger sense countered. Unsheathing her blade, she turned to her right and clashed against his slashing. Her leg lashed out in a kick, smashing her second attacker squarely in the chest. The injured attacker was pushed back and dispelled itself in a plume of smoke, only for another opponent to take his place. Flash after flash of steel illuminated the forest's darkness, reflecting the scant beams of sunlight that penetrated the dense canopy. Despite the overwhelming numerical odds, Izumi was either panicked nor concerned. Naruto was really a genius in his own right, but so was she. A blurring vacuum of darkness managed to draw her eyes away from her attackers for a split second. Shuriken. She mocked. Child's play. Without even activating her Sharingan, she danced away from his attacks, putting distance between herself and her persistent protege. Lacing her fingers through the Shuriken's center, she redirected the metal stars at Naruto's clones. The raven hair Umbu always wondered where he learned Shadow Clone just from. Naruto said that he found it from a scroll which a Jonin dropped. Obviously, it was a lie but Izumi didn't know how to expose it, so she just could pass it. Not only that, his Taijutsu was in a close race with Chunin and his skills with Chakra Knives which was the same the Hokage's son used was good. How the hell an academy student was very strong like that? Anyone was insane enough to teach him the... Izumi started regretting her decision when they had their first training spar. The fourteen shadows that were currently chasing her. Stupid shadow clone. Stupid cute whiskered blonde. If it was any other mission, or any other training exercise, she would have already slaughtered the clones and pinned down the little blonde rascal. Her eyebrow twitched as she saw another two plumes of smoke spawn off to her left. In that moment, she came to one conclusion. She hated the shadow clone jutsu. Never before in her line of duty had she ever hated a jutsu. As a ninja, she saw everything, and that means everything. As fair game, no matter how immoral or how cheap something seems. But now, for the first time, she despised the cloning technique and its creator. She could never hate her cute little fox, so she directed her hate towards the man who created the damn technique. Naidame Sama had better hope there's no way to resurrect him, or I'll give him a piece of my mind. For just a second, when she saw another plume of smoke appear to her right, she felt more annoyed. But who was she could blame for? Her rival was a boy who pranked everywhere, not Chunin. Jounin or even Anbi you could catch him except her and dog after all and he was just fucking eight year old. Not even Yandame Hokage, the youngest genius, could do that in the same age. Somersaulting backwards, her blade redirected each attack he sent her way. His kenjutsu, although more than passable and would allow him to hold his own against most opponents, was basic. He was, by no means, hacking and slashing like a barbarian with a butcher's knife, but his form lacked the refined stances of those who had turned the skill into an art form. Kenjutsu wasn't a high priority skill, but it was something to teach him, a fallback should he ever be forced to face a bladed opponent, excluding Kunai. 
Catching a Kanai mid-flight, she turned and drove the sharpened blade into the neck of an overextended clone. Pulling back, another's downward slash barely missed the tips of her fingers. He's good. With every encounter, every skirmish, Naruto seemed to predict her movements just a little bit better. Even now, she could see the change in the clone's behavior. Before, their movements were somewhat unpredictable, some combination of what she suspected to be innate talent and her training. Now, every clone's attack seemingly changed on a dime. Attacks she thought were meant to hit were instead pulled away by the tiniest of margins, only to be replaced by flurries of unorthodox attacks from above and below. H.M. His ten minutes are up. Giving no warning, she turned the tide of battle. Rather than pulling back and away from his attacks, she moved closer to them. Weaving in and out of his attacks, she dove into the melee with knife hands and precise jabs. Each movement controlled with pinpoint accuracy, striking vital points and redirecting his sword strikes by pushing his wrists away. Her student might be a fast learner and a genius in his own right, but he is a long way from becoming her equal in combat, especially if he continued to hold back against her. That thought made her frown for the briefest instant. Why was he holding back against her? Was he not taking her seriously? No. That couldn't be. He'd done everything she'd asked of him. He trained until he dropped, an incredible feat given his status and clan origins. Was he simply making silly mistakes? Yes? No? Perhaps a little of both? That was something she'd noticed rather quickly. For the first week, all of his attacks, his movements seemed short. There was no other way to put it. It was like his limbs were too short for what he intended to do. Every movement felt overextended. Now, three months later, his movements are smoother, much more coordinated and more fluid than she'd expected him to be, though she chalked it up to be the memories reinforced by his shadow clones. Speaking of shadow clones, her kunai pierced through the last clone's ribs, slipping between the third and fourth rib with no resistance. The clone disappeared after a poof sound. Turning around, Izumi stared down her favorite, and only, apprentice, her face a mask of indifference. Standing before her, Naruto brandished his two chakra blades in his right and left hands respectively. Without a word, they dashed towards one another, her blade and kunai against his chakra blades. Strike after strike, she blocked and parried, letting no concern show on her face. He's stalling, but what for? Her blade slid itself against Naruto's until the guards of the blades locked against one another. At first, what she assumed was a foolish contest of strength on his part became a deadly game of cat and mouse as she caught a blur of motion from the corner of her eye. Tilting her head backwards, she tracked the white blur of steel as it came dangerously close to her cheek and nose. Hit and run tactics. Clever. The clone that flew by her face wasn't the only one to flank her as another series of blurs around her forced her to push Naruto away, flipping backwards with fluid grace and perfect timing. She dodged every attack with the narrowest margin of error. Barely catching the briefest flash of black against the shimmering sunlight above, she watched. Fascinated as the clones above spawned even more clones before throwing themselves down at her with unerring accuracy. He wants to play, does he? Smirking, her Sharingan flared to life. Her blessed eyes darted back and forth, tracking each human projectile and tracing out their paths with perfect clairvoyance. Replacing her kunai with a single kunai shuriken, Izumi loosed the deadly projectile. The dark metal star weaved its way through the barely illuminated canopy headed straight for the clones above, though for none in particular. Those clones never even had a chance to even breach the leaves above. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu The single star multiplied until thirty stars filled the morning sky and tore through the squad of skyborn clones. The morning silence was soon broken with the sound of dispersing clones as her shuriken found their mark. Turning to the side, her eyes peered into the darkness, seeing the small pulses of chakra used by Naruto's clones to propel themselves at her from nearby trees. With her Sharingan active, their efforts could only lead to one outcome. Death. Grabbing the arm of a clone sailing past her, she spun and tossed him at another clone, adding in her own momentum to guarantee the dispersal of both. Another tried to come at her from a downward angle of attack. Death came to him as quickly as it had with the others when her blade nicked his side. The resulting plume of smoke did little to stop the black-haired prodigy as she continued to spin and dance with her blade. With every swing, another clone fell until only Naruto was left, but he showed no signs of surprise or shock, as if he knew this result before. Sheathing her blade, she charged at Naruto with only a kunai in hand. Slashing down with her kunai, black and iron met with silver steel. Her hand snaked forward, stopping his left hand in its tracks and keeping his knife away from her. Her legs slid forward, kicking out Naruto's legs and sending him onto his back, effectively pinning him beneath her weight. 
swirling Sharingan faded to coal black as she smiled down at her student. Yield? Naruto sighed in response, his muscles going slack. Yield. Letting him up, she smiled at him. Oh, don't be like that Naruto-kun. She helped him dust and adjust his gear. You almost had me with those clones of yours. Rather than comfort him, her words caused the little blonde's pout deepened. I know my capability. You don't have to lie to me to make me feel better, Izumi Nichin. Naruto sighed, adjusting the scabbard strap on his back. All right, she agreed. But you did do so well with your chakra blade. I'm really surprised. Naruto only shrugged in agreement, seemingly lost in thought as the two tree hopped their way to the library. Izumi really wanted him to rest but Naruto insisted to go and borrow some scrolls and books to read in his home. She couldn't do anything to his stubbornness. Passing by several shinobi and civilians, Naruto ignored glares and insults sent his way. He couldn't care less about them. Izumi felt the same way as she held his hand, giving it a gentle squeeze. Thanks, Neichan. He returned the gesture, giving her a thankful smile, and she smiled softly in response. The Uchiha compounds were large, spanning over a few hectares that was the biggest plot of land privately owned in the village. The compound was almost a small village within the village, and mostly self-sustaining with the bakeries, butchers, gardeners, farmers and contractors bearing the infamous name of the Sharingan clan being self-reliant. Many of the villagers saw it as a case of chauvinistic attitude birthed from feeling entitled to being one of two founding clans of this village. And many wouldn't be wrong in their judgment. Many Uchiha were arrogant because of the esteemed lineage they belonged to. The egotism then caused the Uchiha clan to be looked on with wary eyes if not disdained by many. Certainly a vicious circle that had always bugged Uchiha Mikoto. The mother of two couldn't quite understand why some members of her clan felt entitled when there were others who were just as skilled, or contributed just as much to the village as her family had. Of course, not all Uchiha stood on grand pedestals and sneered at those they deemed inferior. But those Uchiha were not privy to having the Sharingan. Perhaps it was the legendary eye that determined who was an asshole and who was nice in her clan. It was rumored the Sharingan corrupted those who awakened the mighty eyes of old. Either way, she hoped her daughters would not fall into the same self-centered world many of her clan lived in. Oh well, Mikoto was in too good of a mood today to think about her clan. She was just done with Sharingan training for her youngest daughter, Achiha Sasuki and the little girl left for taking a bath. Mikoto never thought her two daughter awaken their Sharingan at eight. Sasuki's case was a little awkward though. The Achiha mistress sighed when she thought about it. She torn between lecturing a certain kiss son hair boy for his actions with her daughter and thanked him for helping her getting her clan dojutsu soon. She didn't really want that though. Because everyone knew what Uchiha Fugaka did to his oldest daughter after he found out Izumi's Sharingan. So there were just her or Izumi knew about Sasuke's Sharingan, and repeatedly, she told her younger daughter hid her Sharingan. Sasuke was unhappy as she wanted to show her father her Sharingan, but she respected her mother so she obeyed her. No way Mikoto would let her husband ruin their other child's childhood after what he forced Izumi to become. I'm home. Speak of the devil. The Uchiha mistress turned and saw the Uchiha clan head coming back from the meeting with the Hokage and the Kanoha council. One look at his features told her, he was clearly unhappy. Guess the meeting didn't end in his favor. Fugaka headed to the kitchen. Mikoto stood in the ranch slider door that led to their backyard with a frown on her face before she moved to follow her husband to the kitchen. She tilted her head at seeing her husband drinking from a sake dish. The meeting go that bad? She asked coolly. The man sighed before finishing his alcohol. Never a good sign when Fugaka drank during the day. The Hokage. He spat with venom. Has refused giving us more land. And the council insults us by not allowing us to reclaim what is so rightfully ours. He growled before pouring himself another drink. Mikoto sighed. This wasn't the first time but Fugaku was stubborn. She then realized he didn't ask anything about their daughter, and she was very displeased. I failed to see why that has given you cause to act so briskly with our daughters, Fugaku. All what you say is your complaints about the Hokage and the council or problems that you can't solve yourself. Especially Izumi, since she became a ANBU, you have been severely hard on her. A three-pronged blood-red Sharingan was turned on to her. The legendary eyes of her clan stared hotly at her before dissipating into a sea of black hues. The anger fading slightly but still there under the surface like an infection. She is an adult. I cannot panhandle her anymore. The Uchiha clan head's wife frown deepened. She is your daughter, our daughter, and she is just thirteen for God's sake. The least you could do is show that you care for her as her father. She chastised. Anyways, where is Izumi? Fugaku decided to ignore her words. I need her for something important. She left for helping Naruto-kun's training. Mikoto answered dryly. She knew Fugaku would be displeased with this. 
As expected, the man narrowed his eyes. Good thing. That kid can become our powerful weapon once the time come. He said with a disgusted tone. Mikoto gritted her teeth and clenched her fists. This man didn't really know his limit, he is not a weapon, she growled. He's just a child with a heavy burden and if it weren't for him, this village and our clan would be destroyed eight years ago. Our clan is destroyed? Don't make me laugh, woman. We can totally control the Kyubi no Yuko with our dojutsu, and show not only this pathetic village, but the world the Uchiha clan is above all. The will of fire? It's completely ridiculous. The Senju clan is nothing to compare with the Uchiha clan. Fugaki yelled in anger, his Sharingan glowing. What the hell happened to you, Uchiha Mikoto? When do you care for a strange so much? Is this for the mighty Yandame Hokage, that Namikaza Minato right? Mikoto widened her eyes before her bangs covered it up. She didn't tell anything. Fugaki knew that he hit her weakness, he grinned mockingly and continued, I should have known it. No way you forget that son of a bitch easily. What's better in him? He was nothing but a clan-less orphan from anywhere while I was the Uchiha heir. Yellow flash of Kanoha? What's the matter with it? I can do so much more with my Sharingan. He was Yandame Hokage. I could become Hokage if it wasn't for the damn village council and the Sandame. Fugaka spat out at his wife angrily. Mikoto just turned her back on him. She couldn't let him see her tears. You're an Uchiha, Mikoto. You belongs to a famous and powerful clan of the five great shinobi countries and you just contacts the noble people. But why? The Uchiha whispered as he approached at Makoto slowly. Why did you keep your eye on a clan-less kid? He just saw you as a best friend and his teammate while I, the Uchiha heir, always turned my attention to you, but you didn't set your eye on me, not a single damn one. Tell me Makoto. Why? Why was it always him but not me? Stop. Why stop? Am I wrong? Or you just don't want to face it. Fugaka hissed, his mind filled with pure indignation. Don't you feel unfair for me? I love you. I've loved you since the first time I saw you but you never noticed me. You just looked at him. You always cared for him. You chose him above me. You loved him. No matter how long I was waiting and hoping, you still loved him when you even knew he wouldn't reciprocate your feelings. Stop. You were a foolish and pathetic girl because of him, you know. Fugaka whispered you loved him but the girl Namike's Minato was devoted to was Uzumaki Kushina. It was Uzumaki Kushina, your best friend, took away your crush. What a laugh. He said with a bitter smile. For you, you accepted it though it make you hurt so much. You still thought that Uzumaki Kushina was your best friend without remembering that she ruined your chance with Namike's Minato. Please stop. Even now, Namike's Minato died with his stupid Uzumaki. I and you are a married couple and have two daughters together but I know that there have never been my place in your heart, that there is just Namike's Minato in there, that you will never love me no matter how much I try, that your body's here but your soul followed him eight years ago. Enough. Shut the fucking up. Mikoto roared in rage, she turned to face Figaku and deadly glared at him. The man froze as he looked at her eyes, her Sharingan with blood tears flowing from both eyes, in place of the normal spinning tomos was a black hexagon with a small red circle in the middle of it. The Uchiha Patriarch realized it. The Manjiku Sharingan. You how and when did you get Manjiku Sharingan? He demanded but Makoto didn't care for answering him. She just simply eyed her husband with fire, enraged that the man dared to her patience. And she, for a moment, wanted to stomp him to death. Okasan. A soft voice suddenly spoke out, snapping Makoto out of her murderous thoughts. It was Sasuke's. She couldn't let her little daughter see this. Not these. The Uchiha mistress swallowed hard before relaxing every muscle in her body. Fugaku was going to tell something but she threw the man in front of her a warning look. About that plan Mikoto suddenly spoke out. Fugaku became tense as he heard his wife's word. Of course he knew what she was talking about. There's no way I will join in. Don't try to convince me as my mind's made up. I and my comrades in the clan will fight tooth and nail in every case and if you dare to think of using Izumi or Sasuke or even Naruto for your ambition she glared at him her Manjiki Sharingan gleaming. I will eliminate you. And she turned to reach her youngest daughter, didn't even look back, so Makoto didn't see tears pour down the Uchiha clan head's face. Everyone say that Uchiha always get what they want, but I don't get what I want best. After taking Naruto to the library, although Izumi really wanted to escort him to come back his home then, but an Anbu suddenly came and told that the Sandames summoned her now. Couldn't disobey the Hokage's order and Naruto told that it would take a while to get what he need, 
So Izumi decided to leave and go to the Hokage Tower. Naruto glanced at the place the Uchiha prodigy was just there. He sighed softly. What do you think, Kurama? He asked the fox. His expression became serious. What do you mean, Kit? Kurama said sheepishly. If Gigi summons Izumi Nichin, no doubt much of conflicts with the Uchiha clan the blonde replied with a sigh. Many times I go to the Hokage Tower and hear arguments between Uchiha-san and Gigi or elders. And just looking at the growing tents in the village, some villagers even showed enmity toward Kanoha military police forces members. He said while still kept on collecting books. Kurama sighed annoyingly, it's not new. The Uchiha clan has never been satisfied with their power. They're power-hungry monsters. All what they always do is demanding more power, so conflicts have always existed since this village was born. He snarled, no way Kurama forgot what Uchiha Madoka did to him. He was fiercely hostile to that woman, he almost felt pity for her, just almost. I know Kurama. But this time is really different he said and started leaving. I feel something very bad will happen soon. Twenty minutes later, Naruto had enough books and scrolls he need, he was about to leave when he noticed a book. At first glance, it was nothing more than a boring, outdated history textbook but for a censor type, Naruto could felt a small wave of chakra from it. It was a genjutsu, a powerful genjutsu. Naruto was interested. This book was put in a corner of the bookshelf where it was difficult for anyone to see it if they didn't look closer, and Naruto was in a room where no one but himself knew about its exists. It means someone cast genjutsu on the book didn't want anybody to know about the book or everything in it. But unluckily, someone who found this book was Uzumaki Naruto. For him, nothing was more nourishing, more stimulating to an active, inquiring mind than being secretive and being challenged. However, the problem was Genjutsu and Naruto didn't know about Genjutsu so much. This Genjutsu was so powerful so it wouldn't be easy to cancel it. He thought of asking Izumi or Makoto for helping but they would surely wondered about where he found it, and Naruto didn't think he would want to answer it. I should have learned about Genjutsu instead of focusing on only Taijutsu and Ninjutsu. I'm stupid. Kid taking that book back your home and got it tucked away. Even after you find the way to cancel the Genjutsu, don't read it if I don't tell you. Huh? Kurama? What are you saying? Why do you want to keep it? What is this book? Naruto asked, still observing the book carefully. Just do what I tell you. In addition, don't tell anyone about it. This is very important, Naruto. The fox said impatiently, keep this book as it's our secret. You can't read it now as you're not prepared well for its information. Oh, but I'm curious. Naruto. Kurama screamed in anger. I ain't joking around. This book has information about top secrets that no one can imagine. It's very and I mean very dangerous. Just hide it carefully, it's just good for you. When I feel you can deal with everything in that book, I will let you do what you want. But now you absolutely must not read it. Naruto heard the Kyuubi's words, looking at the book in his hand. It was extremely rare for his partner to tell seriously about something. He even felt his impatience as he told him not to read the book and hide it. What is that book? What was important and dangerous about it that Kurama freaked out like that? Whatever, Kurama wouldn't lie him anything, and plus the fact that the book was cast a strong genjutsu. I see Kurama. I will keep it somewhere hidden, and if you don't tell I won't read it. Good kit. I know you're curious but just wait for a while. The fox sighed in relief as his jailer heard him. Okay, I suppose we should come back I'm hungry now. Naruto said, picking up scrolls and books, including that book before leaving the room. Meanwhile, in his mindscape, Kurama couldn't stop nervous. He knew about the book, what was written in it, and even its writer. He didn't lie Naruto as he said that information was dangerous. Although his father sealed the fox into him, Kurama didn't hate Naruto. In fact, he felt a little concern and compassion for the blonde. Naruto went through a hard life because idiotic villagers thought he was the Kyuubi. The demon fox had attacked the Hidden Leaf Village twelve years ago, but he didn't despise Kurama for it. They even became friends and partners. Damn you old man. Damn you Ashura. Damn you Hashirama. Why do you always cause me troubles? Fuck it. The Hokage Tower. Saratobi Hiruzen was now sitting in front of his loyal AMBU. With him were the esteemed elders Koharu, Hamira and Danzo sitting besides him. He didn't want it to come but this was the survival issue of Kanahagakur, and the Uchiha clan had left no options. You may remove your mask now, Uchiha Izumi. The Umbu was hesitant but removed her mask. As you guys know, we had tried talking peace talks with the Uchiha clan and they have all but failed that I didn't want it to get to this but I have come to the decision of the extermination. The Hokage said a somber tone as Izumi looked down in sadness and shame. 
Her clan was now to be eradicated to the point of the extermination. We have run out of time. This must be done so that Kanoha can avert civil war. Hiruzen said sorrily, Izumi, I have one final mission for you if you are willing to accept it. Hi. I accept Hokage-sama. She said with an emotionless tone. Are you sure, Izumi? You know you must not remain in Kanoha afterward. You will have to leave. The Hokage asked and Izumi nodded. I will do it, Hokage-sama. After all, I've been feeding you information to keep the peace. But my father wishes to escalate things to open conflict. I don't want that to happen so I will do what I must to save Kanoha. I see. The Hokage looked down, feeling shame as he had to do this. If you say so, one week from now, you shall kill everyone who were involved or knew about the rebellion. The remaining rest shall be spared. The Sandame ordered in a monotone voice. Immediately, Danzo was infuriated that he was still giving them a chance. Haruzen you're getting soft. Are you going to give them another chance even after this? Have you already forgotten the QB attack? Do you remember what it cost us? I would rather not experience it again. Have you gone senile? The Uchiha cannot be trusted. You must realize that. The old warhawk growled. The Hokage was getting furious at his belittling the Uchiha clan in front of Izumi. The Uchiha clan is old comrades in arms and have been with us since the beginning of the village. And your job is only to advise the Hokage and not make decisions. You shall address me as Hokage-sama from now on. Know your place. Hiruzen said coldly leaking a bit of killing intent. Hamura and Kohara didn't speak because of fear while Danzo was seething on the inside and through gritted teeth. Hi, Hokage-sama. He replied. Izumi looked at Danzo with contempt. The Hokage continued okay then. Uchiha Izumi, daughter of Uchiha Fugaku and Uchiha Mikoto, this will be your last mission as a Kanoha Shinobi. Do you understand? H. Hi, dismissed. The Hokage said. Izumi wore her mask and disappeared as elders left the room. Hiruzen leaned back in his chair, thinking of the order he had given. I'm too old for this shit. One week later, the Uchiha clan with Uchiha Fugaku, elders and clan men were slaughtered brutally. Four years later, the village hidden in the leaves had peaceful day after that. People were finally over the Uchiha massacre, and people were finally over it. It was a terrible day. The former Uchiha clan head, Uchiha Fugaku, his loyal clan men and Uchiha elders were killed that night. Some people were so disgusted that some hurled when they heard the gruesome details. They had heard each adult male member was stabbed through the heart, and then their eyes were destroyed. All that was left of the Uchiha were thirty female members and five male Uchiha who were under the age of ten. While the villagers were sad that this happened the remaining Uchiha were sort of glad. Yes they were sad that they lost their loved ones, but it was that or be thrown into a civil war. With all the males gone, Mikoto stepped up as the Uchiha clan head. She was rightfully the clan head because she was the descendant of Uchiha Izuki before, but Uchiha elders wanted to maintain the clan as the patriarch when they were. Fugaku became clan head when him and Mikoto were forced to marry from an arranged marriage. Since Uchiha Mikoto took over, the Uchiha have prospered more than ever before. Who knew all they needed was a woman's touch. However, whoever carried out the massacre was still in the dark. Several investigations were made by the Hokage but they couldn't find anything or anyone suspicious which made everyone feel something off. They didn't stop wondering about the culprit of the Uchiha massacre. Who was that? How could that person slaughtered much of the Uchiha clan like that in one? What was the purpose of the massacre? All of them was mysteries that can't be explained. For the Hokage, he felt relieved as the Hidden Leaf Village wouldn't descend into a civil war and risk of going to an other shinobi war. But he couldn't stop feeling worry about the ANBU who committed the Uchiha massacre. He recalled that he and his ANBU ran to the Uchiha compound, he had been shocked as he saw blood covered the streets and bodies lay scattered across the compound. Entering the house of the Uchiha clan head, he saw Uchiha Fugaku was beheaded and his wife was lying motionless on the floor. An ANBU with the bird mask standing nearby and he was holding a bloody sword. At first, he thought that was Izumi until she came then, and the ANBU disappeared before they could do anything. The massacre happened one day before the day Uchiha Izumi was supposed to do her mission, so it means that person knew about the extermination. However, there were just he, Elders and Izumi herself knew this. Elders always wanted to eliminate the Uchiha clan and Izumi was his loyal ANBU. No way they would tell anyone about it. The other possibility was that person watching the meeting in the Hokage Tower. After the day of the Uchiha massacre, he was reported that someone breaking into the secret room of the Kanoha Archive Library, where stored many top secret documents and scrolls. Luckily, nothing important was lost but Izumi's S-rank mission scroll disappeared. Hiruzen prepared it in case after the Uchiha prodigy completed the mission and left the village, and elders had any bad moves toward remaining Uchiha.
he could affirm that the mysterious ANBU stole it. The massacre was committed by someone, so Izumi didn't need to do what she didn't want, she didn't need to leave the village and the Hokage was really thankful for that. By the way, Izumi was one of the strongest shinobi in the entire village. Letting her become a missing nin wasn't a good thing and she was still too young to carry a heavy burden. The Ninja Academy, Graduation Day, Naruto, alongside what remained of his classmates, was waiting for the final part of the graduation exam. They had already completed the written part earlier in the day, and the accuracy and taijutsu portions the day before. Now, though, they had to do the practical part, performing a randomly selected E-rank jutsu for the instructors. So far, most of the class had gone and either passed or failed. The only ones that had yet to take it were himself, Yamanaka Ino, and a couple of civilian students, with Sasuke having been called in just a few minutes before. Ever since the Uchiha massacre, Naruto and Sasuke had been closer than before. The blonde boy became a frequent visitor to the Uchiha district to meet and training with the Uchiha girl. Becoming the clan head of Uchiha clan, there was much more work for Mikoto to do, especially after the Uchiha massacre and most of clan men were killed. No more Uchiha Fugaku and elders, everything became easier to improve the relationship between the Hidden Leaf Village and the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Izumi had more time for her sister. She helped Sasuke and Naruto in ninjutsu, taijutsu, and a little genjutsu training. Despite her grief for her father's death, the youngest Uchiha tried to take effort and get stronger, better every day. And luckily, Sasuke didn't want revenge. The Curse of Hatred, a dangerous curse of the Uchiha clan. According to Naidame Hokage, the Uchiha were people greatly devoted to love and friendship, yet they tended to conceal their more affectionate traits. When the object of their affection was lost, an Uchiha's love could instantaneously turn into hatred, leaving them more inclined to do anything and everything in their power to achieve their goals and showed their own superiority, regardless of the consequences and repercussions of their actions. To his relief, Naruto was glad his best friend wasn't obsessed to the hatred. Her father was killed brutally though, and the Uzumaki prepared for dealing with an avenger that didn't happen luckily. He didn't like thinking of losing his best friend to that curse of her clan. However, she surely wanted the truth about the massacre. Not only her but many people, especially Mikoto, Izumi and remaining Uchiha, deciding that it was better focus on his graduation exam first. Looking around, Naruto could see everyone was anxious to get the exam finished or in fact, they were curious about the results, because it would most likely decide the rookie of the year. The rookie of the year was decided by combining the overall score from their time in the academy, and the score on the final exam. Naruto, however, didn't care about it, he even tried to do last part enough to pass because it was for the golden rule. Deception is a shinobi greatest weapon and an other reason. Of course, Sasuke was unhappy with that. She couldn't bear how people were generally biased towards the blonde boy but Naruto still just told she didn't take it and that he didn't care. Think about your little girlfriend again Kit Kurama asked him goadingly. Naruto couldn't help but groan at the fox's taunt. Not because of the fact he was saying he'd lose, but because of his insinuation about Sasuke. It's not like that Kurama. We're just friends, he insisted. To his dismay, all he heard was a snort from the tailed beast. Suddenly, he was taken out of his musing by the sound of the door sliding open. A second later, Sasuke stepped out of the classroom and into the hall. Naruto's eyes automatically flickered to her forehead, where he wasn't surprised to see a brand new blue clothed headband. His then met her gaze and offered her a slight smirk. Well, I guess you didn't have any trouble then, he said. Sasuke scoffed at his words. Please, what did you expect? I think even an idiot like you could pass that test. She replied, with a smirk of her own. Naruto shook his head, still proud and cocky as usual. But he couldn't deny her abilities. Her points was all perfect. Well, she was the prime candidate for the rookie of the year after all. Next up, Uzumaki Naruto. Iruka's voice called out from inside the classroom. Naruto gave Sasuke one last smile, and then made his way into the room. Without all the kids in its tiered seats, the classroom looked even larger than normal. In the room where Iruka and a pale-skinned man stood out most with his silver hair, Mizuki. He had joined the teaching staff as Iruka's assistant five years ago, and Naruto found out almost immediately that, unlike Iruka, Mizuki clearly hated him and was one of those that thought he was Kurama. Good luck Naruto-kun, Mizuki said and smirked. He is definitely up to something, for one he is going faster than possible for Genin to keep up. What do you think Kurama? As Naruto asked Kurama, he ducked a kick aimed for his head. Fail this exam and see what he is up to. He's never this kind to you before. Okay, I'll fail at the clone test. After all it's my worst Naruto mentally smirked. Time to begin operation. Fall from grace. You could have came up with a more a fitting name you know. 
Well, I don't exactly have much time to come up with one, you know. Well, Naruto, all you have to perform a transformation, substitution, and clone jutsu, creating three clones successfully, any order you wish. Hi, Iruka sensei Naruto chirped. Naruto then transformed into a naked girl with it was privates covered in smoke giving both men in the room a giant nose bleed. As they chased Naruto around the room, he then Kawarimi with the chair Mizuki was sitting on as the both fell over in a pile while Naruto laughed at them. While the class outside heard the crashing and laughter, they just sweat dropped. Sasuke audibly smacked her forehead with her palm while in the outside. A certain A&B with the weasel mask just shook her head in amusement. Her eyes twitched as Naruto used transform. As the situation became normal again if you called normal as both teacher having tissue stuck in their nose, blood splattering on their vests and all over the room from said blood nose normal, then it was normal. Alright, Naruto time to do the clone jutsu. Iruka offered Naruto a smile. Alright clone jutsu. Naruto then did the jutsu and three dead clones appear. Naruto, you fail. Come on Iruka, give the boy a break, surely he can pass? No, he can't even do a simple jutsu like a bunshin. How can he survive the shinobi world? As Naruto heard this he inwardly smiled, knowing that Iruka cared for his safety, and how little they actually knew. Naruto came out of the room with his head down, and headed outside the classroom. I knew the dog won't pass. He never do anything good. A civilian student who was one of Sasuke's fanboys exclaimed as he saw Naruto coming out without the headband. Sasuke just glared at that boy. She then sneered, you all didn't know anything about him so I suggest that you should stop bad-mouthing him. If you have any pride you would go train, instead of chasing me around like idiots, and she left them there. Meanwhile in Sasuke's head, how would Naruto fail? He's even better than Moonless, he has his reason. In the outside of the window, Izumi narrowed her eyes, she felt something strange as she fully knew Naruto's ability and he just smirked right? Mizuki while just headed though the door giving Iruka a quick farewell. All right class, you passed the genin exams, congratulations all. Naruto was outside on the swing pretending to be sad. Great job. That's my son. Now you're a man. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to make your favorite dinner. Naruto shook his head to get rid of his depressing thoughts, finding comfort in thinking of what Mizuki was conspiring. He would tell Hokage Gigi if that was a bad thing, and maybe the old man would allow him to retake. Hey, that kid Naruto's ears perked up, recognizing that tone of voice. Yeah, that's him. Luckily, he failed. It's good for the village. Something that dangerous shouldn't be allowed to become a shinobi. Especially since he's... Hey we can't talk about that. Naruto sighed. He was glad the present Uchiha clan head wasn't here. Otherwise she could have probably killed those two shinobi for what they said about him. Mikoto, Izumi, and sometimes Sasuke were overprotective of him. Hey Naruto. Mizuki sensei Naruto said sadly is there something wrong? I just want to talk to you about something. Why don't we walk together? He said with a friendly smile. Naruto, don't be so sad. I have another way for you to pass the genin exams? Naruto perked up at this immediately. What's it sensei? Well it's a secret assignment for genins, so you must let anyone else know, okay? As expected Naruto thought, and nodded enthusiastically. Alright, your task is to steal the forbidden scroll in the Hokage Tower and learn a technique from it, and then I'll pass you alright? Mizuki then pulled out a map. We will meet here in three hours alright? Hi! Naruto sped off into the distance to tell what the Hokage he had learnt. Meanwhile Mizuki chuckled evilly ignorant to the doom befalling him. I should talk to Gigi about how it's way away too easy to break in here Naruto thought with a sweat drop as he snuck around the tower. I mean seriously. A failed academy student has been sneaking around with academy level stealth skills. Where the hell is everyone? Naruto, what are you doing at my house at this hour? Naruto sighed in exasperation and whirled to be face to face with the sanding. Finally. About time someone showed up. I've been waiting for someone to catch me since I started climbing the side of the tower. Naruto exclaimed, exasperated, only serving to confuse the Hokage greatly. Wait, what? Why in the world are you trying to get caught? Naruto's brow scrunched up as he crossed his arms, the entire image looking rather funny as Naruto tried to look serious. Well, Mizuki-sensei came up to me after I failed the exam and told me about this secret assignment I could take to up my score. Naruto watched in hidden interest as the Hokage stiffened at this. Yeah, he's definitely a traitor though it was pretty obvious after he told me about the test. Oh? The Hokage asked with forced amusement and nonchalance. And what is this test he gave you? Naruto shrugged. Break into the Hokage Tower. Find some scroll labeled forbidden or something and learn one jutsu from it at a secret meeting spot while I waited for him there. All without getting caught. I thought it was a little fishy so I decided to tell you about it. 
Well I'm glad you told me, Naruto. I think I'm going to assign you your first mission. Naruto was nearly bouncing off the walls at the prospect of a mission. Well, what is it Gigi? Tell me. Tell me. The Hokage chuckled at his surrogate grandson's enthusiasm. Listen carefully, Naruto. This is going to be an A-rank mission. Naruto's eyes began to sparkle excitedly. Your mission is to draw out the traitor Chunin Mizuki. What are the parameters of the mission? Naruto questioned as the Hokage took a scroll from a seal on his hand. Naruto internally smacked himself when the Hokage looked startled at the question, but hoped the curious childlike gaze he was sending him would disarm the old man which it thankfully did. He smiled as he handed Naruto the scroll, watching as the blonde strapped it to his back. I will send an A and B following you from the shadows but will step in only if you are in danger of dying. That's comforting Naruto thought, not that it's any different from how they guarded me as a kid. If that's an A and B you, I want Rizal-san to go with me. The blonde boy recommend. It was not just happened Naruto asked for Izumi's help. He felt her chakra from the academy. He wasn't sure she could heard the talk between him and Mizuki or not. The Hokage knew about the relationship between his young ANBU and this boy. After all, she offered his personal guardian in the shadow. It helped Izumi less missions outside the village to have the time for her family and Naruto was very close to the Uchiha clan, especially his friendship with Sasuke. And the Hokage was sure Izumi would follow him without hesitation once she knew this. Okay, Naruto-kun. If you say so, Weasel. The call the NBU jumped down from somewhere and knelt before her leader. Go with Naruto and capture the traitor Mizuki. He commanded. Hi, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen turned to the blonde. I'd like you to knock him out, but you are allowed to use deadly force if necessary. Naruto nodded. Yes, Gigi. Don't worry, I don't like killing so I will do the best I can do to capture him unless it is unavoidable. Naruto made his way over to the window. I'll be back in no time so you better get my pay ready. The Hokage only chuckled, but stopped him as Naruto was already halfway out the window. Naruto. The blonde looked back questioningly. What would you have done if Mizuki was telling the truth and this really was a test? Naruto only gave a mischievous grin that sent a shiver down the old man's spine. That's easy, Gigi. I would have just used my sexy jutsu on you and run off after finding the scroll. Naruto laughed at the Hokage's shocked and mortified expression as he leapt out the window to make his way to where Mizuki team had told him to go, without noticing the pierced glare the female ANBU gave him. Naruto was catching his breath, sitting on the forest floor as he got his heart rate back to normal. Damn Mizuki must have gone around telling everyone I stole the scroll. No other way all the ninja of the village would know to chase me around this particular night. I'm so giving him a good pounding. I've found you H-E-Y. Naruto's head snapped up to see an angry, smiling, and shaking Irika. Are you kidding me? How the hell did he find me? Oh crap oh crap oh crap, think think. Naruto immediately jumped up with a grin, posing as he pointed at Irika with both hands. Oh. I found the nose bleeder. It was then Irika employed his famous big head jutsu. Idiot. I found you. Naruto only scratched the back of his head, while Irika huffed in irritation. The blonde chuckled lightly. You found me Ivy only learned one skill. Irika put his hands on his hips. Hey, you're all beaten up. What were you doing? Naruto glanced at his beaten up clothes, noting all the small scrapes and bruises on his skin. Well, I had to pass the time somehow so why not spar with my shadow clones? Naruto only grinned excitedly at his teacher. Never mind that. Hey, hey, I'm gonna try an incredible jutsu. If I do IT I will pass the graduation, right? Naruto mentally rolled his eyes. I think I'm starting to feel insulted that people actually think I'm this stupid. I can't wait until the day of team assignments. Naruto only squatted slightly as he made the hand sign for the shadow clone, but not actually performing it, pretending to take time to concentrate. Naruto, Irika called. HN? He asked, borrowing the Uchiha's famous monosyllable. Where did you get that scroll on your back? Naruto straightened. Oh this? He looked back at the scroll. Mizuki-sensei told me about it, and about this place too. It'd be nice if you figure this out soon, Irika-sensei. Mizuki's getting closer he said if I showed you this skill, I'd definitely pass the exam. Both Irika and Naruto stiffened as they felt, and or heard a volley of kunai coming their way. Irika was the first to react, pushing Naruto out of the way before he could leap away on his own, leaving Irika to get hit. Crap, crap, crap. He has horrible timing. Maybe training with my clones wasn't such a good idea Naruto thought as he struggled to feign ignorance and idiocy, looking between the crouching Mizuki on a tree branch and the injured Irika. Nice job in finding him. Mizuki mocked his childhood friend, 
his arms still outstretched from when he threw the kanai, two large shuriken tied to his back. Iraka glared at the traitorous Chunin. I see so that's what's going on Naruto, meanwhile, was silently releasing his weight seals, knowing Jenin's speed wasn't going to cut it. Asterisk. Naruto, give me the scroll. Naruto twitched at having been addressed, covering up his tenseness by looking stupidly between his sensei and the traitor, sending Iraka a nervous grin. Hey. Hey. What's going on here? Hey. Iraka responded to the exchange by struggling of the wall he was leaning off, pulling a bloody kanai out of his chest though more littered his body. Naruto. Don't give him the scroll. Mizuki only stood with a smirk. That is a dangerous scroll that has forbidden ninjutsu sealed within it. Mizuki used you in order to get his hands on it. Naruto took this as his cue to look shocked before standing and looking pissed and determined. How touching to see you protecting the monster, Iraka. Mizuki said with a laugh. He's not a monster. Iraka growled. What are you talking about? Naruto asked, eyes wide in fake confusion. Mizuki's only response was to grin and look down at him condescendingly. You want to know the truth, brat? You want to know why the villagers all look down on you? Why everyone hates you? Naruto tensed, Iraka as well, both dreading what they knew was coming. No, Mizuki. Iraka yelled. That's an S-class secret. Oh geez, don't tell me he's that stupid. Don't tell me he's going to dash. Twelve years ago you know about the demon fox being sealed, right? Naruto internally sighed. Yeah, he really is that stupid. And he's technically wrong, too. I'm a being that's made entirely out of chakra. I'm much more powerful than some measly demons. But what do you expect from a stupid hairless flesh bag? Since that incident, a new rule was created in the village. Naruto's eyes became wide at that, looking at Mizuki in false confusion. A rule? He asked in a naive tone. Kurama? What are you doing awake? He asked his furry partner. The fox's response was to scoff. You kidding? This is the most eventful thing that's happened since you met me. You think I'm going to miss out on some entertainment after being stuck in a dank sewer for nearly ten years? Not to mention the hundreds of years stuck in two women. God those two were such. But Naruto, this rule was never told to you. Naruto was glad for the interruption, not wanting to hear Kurama cursing anymore. I can hear your thoughts you know. Naruto ignored him in favor of getting back to his pro acting. Not to me? Why? What is this rule? Mizuki began to chuckle menacingly under his breath. What kind of rule is it? He smirked at Naruto as he answered. The rule is that nobody is allowed to talk about the fact that you're the demon fox. What? Did that worthless shit stain just mistake me for a tiny little meat bag? Kurama roared in anger. Huh? Inwardly, Naruto was fuming at the fox's outburst. Excuse me? He said in a falsely innocent tone. What do you mean, Air? who I totally think better of compared to the rest of you tiny humans, since, you know, you're all kinda small to me. I am supposed to be bigger than even your Hokage monument, and you kind of look the same to me, well most of you. I only bother remembering my enemies and well there's you but seriously you're all so small, like ants or something no weight fleas. Yeah that's a good size comparison. Stop it! Iraka yelled, bringing Naruto back from being entertained by Kurama's form of an apology. It means that you, Mizuki continued unaffected, are the nine-tailed demon that killed Iraka's parents and destroyed the village. Naruto froze, in shock at the revelation. You were sealed up by the Hokage that you admire and... Stop it! Iraka repeated vainly, Mizuki going on as if uninterrupted. And you have been lied to by everyone. Didn't you find it odd how everyone hated you? This is a lot less traumatizing the second time around Naruto thought idly. Try as hard to force tears down his cheeks. Mizuki reminding him too well of the negativity he's had to endure over the years. That bastard, he make it sound like I'm a brutal monster. I don't want to do that if it weren't for that F asterisk King Uchiha bastard. Kurama growled. Calm down, I know that. You're always my great partner, Kurama. Mizuki only continued grinning, grabbing one of the large shuriken on his back. He started spinning the large shuriken in his hand. Iruka is the same. He actually hates you. Naruto only ground his teeth in frustration. Nobody will ever accept you. Naruto was prepared to block the large shuriken thrown his way, a kanai waiting in his sleeve to be thrown at Mizuki, when Iruka again interfered by knocking him down and taking the projectile to his back. Naruto didn't have to fake the shock this time, staring up at Iruka in wide-eyed horror, a drop of his warm blood leaving a trail following the path of one of his whisker marks. Why? And why am why parents after they die there was no one to compliment me or acknowledge me was so sudy would always act like an idiot to get people's attention. Since I wasn't able to do well in things like school, I'd get attention that way it was better than being nothing, 
so I kept acting like an idiot it was so painful. Tears began to cascade down Irika's cheeks, dropping down onto Naruto's own and cleaning of the drop of blood that had fallen previously. Yeah Naruto, you must have been in a lot of pain too. I'm sorry Naruto. If I had done a better job, you wouldn't have had to feel like this. At that moment, the blonde wanted nothing more than to tell Irika he was wrong, that just treating him normally was enough, that he wasn't in so much pain anymore. Naruto wanted so badly to tell him that he had found precious people and that Iruka was already one of those people. But now wasn't the time. Right now the whisker Jinchuriki had a mission to do. He swallowed once, a look of determination crossing his face when he glanced at Mizuki and then ran off into the woods. Gotta lead the traitor away from Iruka at least distract him by running away with the scroll since Iruka sensei has been getting in the way so much. Even though his intentions are good at heart the blonde had been running for a few minutes when he suddenly received the memories of two shadow clone he made almost as soon as he was out of sight of Iruka and Mizuki. Many colorful and inventive curses about stupid traitors and meddlesome teachers left his mouth as he came to a sudden stop and turned on his heel, darting in the direction that his clones had last seen the two. Of course Naruto made it just in time to hear Mizuki accuse the blonde as being the same as the traitor, a statement that had the Jinchuriki growling under his breath. If you use the skills in that scroll, you can do whatever you want. There's no way the demon fox wouldn't try to use that power. Karama, who had been rather quiet for a while, started up again. What the hell is with all these ridiculous assumptions about me? Where in the flying fuck does he get his information? Why would I be interested in your paltry tricks when I can cause earthquakes and tsunamis with a flick of my tails, bitches? Naruto only sighed internally at how worked up Karama could get sometimes, focusing instead on the conversation at hand wondering when the best time to jump in would be. Yeah the demon fox would do that. Seriously? The fuck is wrong with these flesh bags? Do they know me on a personal level? Fuck no! All I did was kill a bunch of their family and comrades. You think these losers would get over it already? I mean they live in a fucking ninja village, the hell did they expect? Sunshine and rainbows? You don't see them getting pissed at some other village for attacking them and killing a bunch of people. Who does Kanoha think they are? IWA? After realizing that the fox wasn't going to stop rambling anytime soon, Naruto elected to start tuning him out. But Naruto is different. He SIV acknowledged him as one of my excellent students. He may not take things seriously and he's clumsy so nobody accepts him already knows what it feels like to have pain in your heart. Iruka's voice became more solid and determined as he went on. He was never the demon fox as a member of Kanahe's Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto's knuckles had gone bone white his fists shaking as he stood and listened to his sensei verbally acknowledge him. Okay, whatever. Mizuki's voice had Naruto getting straight back to mission mode, suppressing his feelings for the moment. Irukai said I would take care of you later, but I've changed my mind. Naruto tensed, seeing the traitor grab his other large shuriken and begin to spin it. Hurry up and die. Not while I'm here, he's not. Naruto immediately shot forwards, his forehead colliding with Mizuki's so fast that the traitor didn't even see it coming. The Chunin got up shakily, glaring death at the whiskered blonde. You should not have done that. Naruto only straightened, knowing that he was all talk no bite. Don't touch my teacher, he glared at Mizuki, or I'll show no mercy. You idiot! Why'd you come out? Run away! Naruto resisted the urge to sweat drop or let his face fall from its serious expression. Jeez you're welcome, Iruka sensei No big deal, I only just saved your life. Drop me? Beat me? You're a thousand years too early to even face me. Do your worst you little shit. Man he's annoying Naruto thought, glancing around and quickly taking stock of his surroundings. Enough with this beating around the bush bullshit. Time to hit back a devilish smirk then crossed Naruto's lips and he looked over his shoulder toward the chunin position perfectly on the other side of it. Oh yeah, this will do nicely. Take this you pest. Mizuki exclaimed, finishing with a tiger seal before breathing in deeply, fire style, great fireball jutsu. He then exhaled, spewing a torrent of fire that quickly formed a ball and began tearing across the ground towards the tree, intent on incinerating it. Grinning at the opportunity presented, Naruto leapt off of the side of his cover, turned to face it, water style, water bullet jutsu. Naruto expelled a large quantity of water aimed towards the fireball. Two jutsu smashed into each other, water naturally extinguished the fire. Even a C-rank ninjutsu. When is he so excellent? Iruka thought, still observing Naruto. Naruto quickly formed the ram and ox seals in quick succession, shadow clone jutsu, he said quietly, and thousands of clones popped into existence, so many that some were perched on the trees all of them grinning down at Mizuki. Wah! 
What's going on? What's wrong? All the clones asked. Weren't you going to kill me with one shot? Some snickered when Mizuki could only fall on his ass in shock. Well then, all the Naruto's began to roll up their sleeve or pound their fist into their hand. Why don't I start things off? All that could be heard for the next half hour was the sound of Mizuki's screams of pain, ones that left the original Naruto very satisfied. Times 1000 since he dispelled all his clones. I think I may have gotten carried away Naruto stared at the bloody pulp for a moment. Well at least he's still alive and it'll be much easier for the TI to break him after this. You you little demon fox Mizuki cursed, despite of his beaten body. Although you're ninja, you will never be accepted in this village. No one will care for Yoji UH. Iroka and Naruto jumped as a figure suddenly appeared out of nowhere. That was ANBU Weasel A.K. Uchiha Izumi. She pierced her kanai through Mizuki's left shoulder. He howled in pain as the Uchiha brought her foot up to kick him off the branch. Watching in the shadow, the Uchiha girl saw everything and even she could hear her own angry growling at every words the traitor told. Her anger only intensified until Izumi had had enough, and she decided to punish him by her way. No one could insult her little fox and got away. Both the teacher and his student had a shiver go down their spine as they felt Izumi's killing intent. Naruto knew that he needed to stop his sister figure before she did more something and at that time, there would be nothing left for the TI department to work with. Air, er, W. Weasel-san because Iroka was here, he couldn't call her name. I was wondering when you'd show up. The scroll is safe, and Hokage-sama wants the target to be alive. The ANBU only nodded as she slung Mizuki over her shoulder and took the scroll from Naruto. She vanished just as quickly as she'd come. Iroka only sighed at the interaction, having guessed at what happened and brushing off Naruto's behavior as being unpredictable like usual. Okay, we should go to the Hokage Tower now Iroka-sensei. Gigi is waiting for us. Naruto started walking. Wait Naruto. I want to give you something. Naruto tilted his head quizzically at Iroka before complying. Close your eyes. Naruto was confused, but did as he was told, trusting Iroka. After a few moments, Naruto couldn't help but ask, Sensei now, you can open your eyes now. He opened his eyes to see Iroka smiling down at him with his forehead protector missing. Congratulations, Naruto. You are now a genin of Kanahagakur. He said with pride in his voice. Naruto felt tears down her face. He then jumped into Iroka with his arms around him. Thank you, Iroka sensei he said in a shaking voice. And Iroka just pat him on the head. You deserve it, my student. I'm proud of you. Iroka said softly. What, if Naruto marries a female Uchiha? Thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel. And leave a like if you guys need the next part. Comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.